created Buffalo Golf and Social for one reason. To create a space that's different and unique from any other golf facility you've ever been to. It's a place to learn. And it's a place to enjoy. You ready? People ask, what is Buffalo Golf and Social? Buffalo Golf and Social is anything you want it to be. It can be the best instruction. It can be a vibe. It can be a hangout with your friends, running a simulator for four hours, playing your own playlist, and putting a game up on the TV. We are about everything and anything pertaining to golf. And most importantly, we are trying to build a community of players and a community of people who love and are dedicated to the game.
Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to Northwest Arena in Jamestown, New York, where Nickel City Hockey Network brings you live coverage of the UNYCHL Final Four. Today's matchup, the Cornell Big Red and the Niagara University Purple Eagles. Thank you very much for joining us today. The live coverage of the UNYCHL on Nickel City Hockey Network is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Buffalo's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. Hello everybody, I'm Sean McHugh alongside color commentator Aaron Alpern, camera operator Jeff Jezerowski, and we get one of the four teams in the Tier 1 semifinals that were here a year ago. And Aaron, this is set up to be a great event. Yeah, only Binghamton here is the repeat performer from last year's Final Four. And we get to see uh, the Cinderella story in the later game today, Niagara County Community College, they'll be facing Binghamton. Our first matchup though, Cornell and Niagara, both of these teams were knocked out of the 2022 playoffs in the quarterfinals. So definitely some new blood in the mix. And yet again, this year we will not have a repeat champion. Has not happened in the history of the league. And the last year's winner, St. Bonaventure, as mentioned, they were knocked out in the quarterfinals this time by Niagara County Community College. So there will be some new blood winning the title this year, maybe with the fact that that's been the history, Sean. Shouldn't really come as a surprise that the Bonnies were unable to make it to Jamestown and the Final Four. Yes, but the Bonnies still are the defending league champions and they are number one ranked nationally in the CHF. So we have not seen the last of the St. Bonaventure Bonnies as they will be at the AAU College Hockey National Tournament in two weeks as will both of these two teams. Niagara, who is the number two ranked team in the nation, such has been the case for most of the season. And Cornell comes in ranked 18th in the CHF. And this matchup is a rematch of a game in the regular season, a one nothing overtime win for the Purple Eagles. Yeah, Marcus Pratt hit, Marcus Pratt had the overtime winner in that one to settle what was a goaltender's duel. Jeremy Siegel from Cornell against Josh Lassell of Niagara. And those two netminders are back in net tonight for the rematch. Siegel coming into this one with a 4-3-2 record, a 3.12 goals against average. Josh Lassell, 11-0-3 this year, a 1.53 goals against average. And these two teams, although they look similar on paper, they came in with due expectations, and we are going to head down now to ice level for the singer of the National Anthem. The Star-Spangled Banner, performed by the United States Marine Marching Band. Just about ready for puck drop here at Northwest Arena, where again we have the Cornell Big Red taking on the Niagara University Purple Eagles. Cornell came into the season not liking where they finished off last season as they had a 500, they finished with a 500 record, were eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. They wanted to make sure that they got better as they were capable of so much more than they showed last year. And they have come a long way towards achieving that goal. As Coach Dave Cole has said that the team is very happy to be here they're happy that their success has come from working out of their defense for structure that drives their offense. And that gets and that has got them to this point as well. And you came into the season with heavy expectations after a very successful inaugural season, coming into the very strong recruiting class, knowing that they're gonna get everybody's best shot. And now they're gonna get Cornell's as we start the UNYCHL Tier 1 Final Four from Jamestown. Just all ready for puck drop here, Aaron. Any thoughts for puck drop? Yeah, Niagara has been, as you mentioned, right near the top of the national rankings all season long. 
They were expected to ascend into the upper echelon of the UNYCHL this year. They have delivered as expected. The overall record this year, 22-2. and two. Certainly have been uh, strong from start to finish. They expected to be here. They are in the spot where they wanted to be. And now they get this rematch with Cornell, a team that gave them all that they can handle earlier on in the season. Yes, like you said, Aaron, it was a one nothing shutout, and both teams are going to come in motivated from that game. Cornell took the loss in a game that they will tell you they feel like they played well enough to win in, and Niagara squeaked away from the skin of their teeth right there, not liking that they needed overtime to get that one goal despite how well Cornell played and what a fight Cornell provided them. Both teams coming in here. Cornell wants revenge. Niagara University wants to prove that they're better than what they showed because this team, coached by Sean Casilio, will look for any thing they can possibly get their hands on to use as motivation. And you're going to use, though, not being able to score on them in regulation probably as that motivation here. Some conversation going here down low with the scorekeeper that's delaying us just a little bit here. Uh, so we'll get to puck drop as soon as the rest are heading down. There's a penalty on the board. Yeah, hopefully they can get that sorted out here very shortly. But uh, give you a little bit of an idea about how each of these teams got here in the playoffs. Niagara defeated the University at Buffalo 3-1 to in the quarterfinals. That game taking place on Monday night. Chad Moore, Zach Briggs, and Ethan Knopf scored for... Wow. Oh, there is a penalty up on the board, and it is an actual call. Protocol violation, bench wow. minor against Niagara. We're going to have to get an explanation about what that was. I'm not sure we're possibly going to get it until we get to the intermission, but uh, that's an interesting way to start things here in the semifinal. We have a bench minor against the Niagara Purple Eagles, so uh, the game will start with a power play for Cornell. I'm not sure I've ever seen that, Sean. I haven't either, and NU still has... Wait, wait no, the penalty's on Cornell. They have it on the wrong side of the score. No, do you know why? The scoreboard's weird because the, the benches where it says home, don't line up with the scoreboard where it says guest. So it's a power play for Niagara to start the game. So right off the hop, we're going to see NU's power play as they pick up the puck and they look to get started behind their own net. That is Jacob Pristall looking to wind it up. Puck sent up and it's head over here to Ethan Knopf. Comes through the neutral zone and gains the blue line. Knopf sends the puck down low. He's got puck side support and NU will look to get the puck set up here. Pristall sends the puck wide over, held there by Chad Moore. Chad Moore getting some pressure there by Franklin Barry. He's taken off his feet, but NU continues their pressure as Damon Thierra picks the puck, sends the puck to the front of the net. Nothing there. Ethan Knopf picks up the puck down low. Knopf sends the puck to Chad Lowe, taps the puck back, where that is picked up there by Logan Scanlon. Ethan Knopf now below the goal line, looks in front of the net, and a nice poke check there by Jeremy Siegel. Cornell looking to break out two on two. Dicer through the neutral zone, gains the blue line. He's met by Pristall, and the puck is dropped back, bear, dropped back to Dennis Brown. Fairly aggressive penalty kill here so far from Cornell. They have been out on puck, the, uh, the puck carriers from Niagara, not giving them a whole lot of room here so far, all, all the way through all three zones, too, in the offensive zone as well as in the neutral zone and in their end, killing this one off. Yes, very aggressive by Cornell, high in the point, and it is working as the captain, Joey Podmanabin, picks up the puck down below the goal line, looks to clear it, but good pressure there. By you, by um, Ooh, dangerous pass. Dangerous pass was picked up there by Case Cook and a good pressure there by Alex Allen. We've seen a lot of him, Aaron. He is physical, he is fast, he is a nightmare to play against. So far, a pretty good penalty kill here from Cornell as uh, they had to start the game a man down, but they have so far uh, been pretty sharp here with the uh, with, with the disadvantage. Just 20 seconds left in the penalty. Case Cook gaining the blue line. He's one man back, sends the puck in, and he continues to hold possession, but he's knocked out the puck for the captain. Podmanabin knocks him off it. Cornell, though, not able to get the puck out of their own end, and there's going to be a high-sticking penalty coming against Cornell. It looks it looks like it's going to be 61. That is Luke Krastios, who is going to be guilty of the high-sticking penalty. He dropped his head as soon as the arm went up, and that will do it, and and, and, and you will have a, very, a brief eight-second five-on-three, and then they'll continue on the power play. Yeah, just eight seconds remaining on the original call, the one that started the game, the uh, bench minor protocol violation against Cornell. So uh, basically we're going to get essentially the first four minutes of a power play to start this game for the uh, number two ranked team in the nation, Niagara. Not like they need any help. They have plenty of offensive talent, but they get to start this game with the uh, man advantage, in this case, five on three for the next eight seconds. Yeah, huge, huge advantage here for NU. Really think they're going to want to capitalize on that. You take all the breaks you get, and NU's going to get set up Right here as Pristall takes the puck at the point, sends it over to Ethan Knopf. Knopf looking for a cross-ice pass. Good defense there by the Cornell penalty kill. Puck sent over to Chad Moore, where it's sent back to Pristall. Pristall takes a point shot. Big save there by Jeremy Siegel. 
Chad Moore on the half wall, sends the puck down low where it's picked up there by Damon Fiera. Fiera looking to wheel it around, circles the perimeter of the zone down to Ethan Knopf. Nice toe drag, but a really good recovery there by Podmanovin, and Cornell will clear. A lot of movement in this power play from Niagara. They like to move it around the perimeter pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty fluidly. Oh, here's a chance here. Dusher in, off the crossbar! What a forecheck there by Cornell as Aiden Cobb gets down below the goal line, forces one in front, and one of the most dangerous of the Cornell Big Red gets in all alone on Josh LaSalle, but he cannot beat the crossbar. Aaron, like you said, the aggressiveness of this Cornell penalty kill is creating offense for them. Hounding pucks in the offensive zone here, not giving Niagara a whole lot of room to get that breakout started. That was uh, a pretty innocent looking breakout pass that got deflected pretty quickly and turned into a great scoring chance for the Big Red. So far, these penalty kills at least have, in the early going so far for Cornell, helped them out to gain a little bit of momentum in life. Yep, definitely don't want to poke the bear too much too much with this penalty kill, but so far, so good for the Cornell Big Red, and they are still, everybody's on the offensive side of center ice as the Purple Eagles look to gain the line. Here's the captain, Zach Briggs, and a good stick there by Podmanovin, and Niagara will have to retreat. Brady Kanoff gears the puck through the neutral zone. He will gain center ice and send it in. Podmanabin and Briggs will chase it. We oh, weird bounce, and it's weird bounce off the poke check. Waved off. He waved it off immediately. Okay. We'll see what this call is because the referee was right there along the goal line. He made the immediate call to wave that one off and uh, see what the explanation of this one's going to be. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a weird one. I mean, I might have missed something, but I just saw it was a weird bounce. Jeremy Siegel had a hard time gathering, and it was put in. Uh, by the captain, Zach Briggs, but like you said, Aaron, the rest waved it off immediately and it will be no goal. We still have 55 seconds left in this Purple Eagles power play. Puck held there by Case Cook at the point, moving in slowly, sends the puck back to Brady Kanoff. Brady Kanoff at the point, gets the puck down low to Case Cook. Cook on the half wall, sends the puck down low where it's picked up there by Niagara University. Marcus Bratton sends it back to Case Cook. Cook to Scanlon, down to Brady Kanoff, who will send the puck over to Cook. Really good possession here by Niagara, but there's no shooting lane so far. Look for him to start moving it from side to side to try to get the goaltender and the penalty killers moving east to west. So far, they've at least gotten the setup there with the, uh, the spreading out of the offensive zone, whether or not they can start gathering some momentum on those passes and moving it around the perimeter and get those skip passes across to really get the defense moving. That's certainly what they're trying to do on the power play. So far, with their four minutes of power play time, they've been unable to really get that going yet. And Sean Casilio will send the top unit back out on the power play as Scanlon will win the puck back to Ethan Kanoff. Ethan Kanoff will drop the puck back to P.J. Abbott. Wires one, and he scores! P.J. Abbott wires one from the blue line, picks the blocker side corner of the goaltender, Siegel. In the first time P.J. Abbott touches the puck, he snipes one, and it's 1-0 Purple Eagles. Niagara gets on the board first as they have the benefit of starting this game with the power play time. They had the power play right off the start and then a one to follow it up and they finally take advantage of it with 19 seconds remaining on the second power play. The de veteran defenseman P.J. Abbott winding it up from the point, getting it past the goaltender Siegel. It took uh, not a whole lot of time in this game versus the first game where these two played. It was all the way into the uh, overtime period, five minutes into overtime that it was Niagara getting on the board, finally breaking the ice. This time it's not even four minutes into this one and Niagara has a power play goal and the one nothing lead. Yeah, this is the first regulation goal scored in this, in this rivalry here. And a puck is put right on Siegel again and we're gonna have an offensive zone face off. That's the start you're looking for for the Niagara University Purple Eagles, Aaron. You're gifted a power play, you get a second one, you take advantage where Cornell can even play a shift at five on five, just the way the doctor drew it up for him. There's gotta be a moment where Cornell's gotta try to get their skates under them and really just try to settle things down here. No real time to feel out the opponent. Already down one nothing. already had to kill off two different penalties. Let's see if they can gain a little bit of life from this next shift. This one's gonna be key for the Big Red. Yeah, Cornell looking to break it out here. Here is Alex Allen on the turnover, drops the puck back where it's picked up by Matthew Weinstein. Weinstein will get the puck in deep for the goaltender. LaSalle will slow it down for Brady Kanoff. Brady Kanoff will send the puck up to Bratton. Bracken a one touch pass just behind his man Thomason and Cornell will gain possession. Puck sent through the neutral zone and Brady Kanoff will look to recover the puck here and we will go back the other way. Podmanabin will get the puck here. He will gather it center ice. He will send a puck up right through to Kratzios. Kratzios down below the line, takes a shot. Goaltender gets his glove on that. Oh, and we get a hockey outlet bounce and it's gonna roll all the way through the neutral zone. Niagara getting a change in here, so a little bit of room for Cornell to move that puck up ice. 
a little slow here against the near boards, and they turn it right back over to the Purple Eagles. Yeah, Cornell having a really hard time establishing puck possession here as NU's Riddle will send the puck in, and Zach Briggs will get ahead of everybody. He will win the race, looking to send it in front right there, but the puck is picked up by Cornell. They're looking to turn this into numbers. Cornell looking, puck sent in deep by Cornell, and they will go for a change. LaSalle plays it down low, but it's picked up there by Cornell in front, and nothing there as the puck comes back out into the neutral zone where Dysert will gather. That was close to a really good scoring opportunity for Cornell. That pass just inches off of being right on the tape. That would have been a nice shot opportunity from right around the hash marks. Breakout pass by Case will send it to Briggs, and Briggs will fire the puck in and head off on a change. Puck picked up there is Bradley Wang, will be engaged here by Riddle, and the puck will be sent out and then put back in on goal there by Case Cook, and Jeremy Siegel will hold on for the faceoff. Good response shift there from Cornell as uh, obviously they started the game somewhat on their heels given the fact that they had to deal with the two penalties right away off the outset here. They uh, sort of got themselves settled in there on that last shift, I would say. A little bit of offensive zone time almost really set up a golden opportunity there along the near hash marks. Puck picked up there by the Big Red. That is Harry Akins. He will send the puck upwards, flagged down by P.J. Abbott and picked up by Euler, but that will be whistled a hand pass, and we will get a face-off to the left of Josh LaSalle. Opportunity for Cornell here to maybe establish a little bit of zone time. Obviously, the advantage in that category has been going for Niagara so far in the first five and a half minutes. That stands to reason, though, given the fact that they, were, uh, they had the power play right at the 20-minute mark and then won again just uh, not even two minutes into the game. They spent basically the first four minutes on the power play until they got the power play goal. And now it's uh, Cornell basically trying to establish a little bit of life here, but you get that standard Niagara set play to, uh, after the one faceoff in their own zone. Don't quite get it connected on, but watch for that one again as this game continues. They like to get that play stretched out off those defensive zone faceoffs. Yes, we've seen plenty of Niagara University over the past couple seasons, and we know that they love to stress the defense on their back paddle, and that's exactly what that set play does. I can promise you, they're 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 gonna they're not even gonna hide it. They're gonna try to do it again. Anything to get that defenseman at the far blue line to be thinking of going back into the defensive area instead of being aggressive on the uh, on holding the line in the offensive zone. Just that little bit of extra advantage in the chess match that the Niagara coaching staff likes to play. Absolutely, and Cornell will pick up the puck in the zone, but a good forecheck here by Ethan Kinoff, and it's picked up there by Chad Moore. Padmanabhan will pick the puck up and he will send it up ice where it's picked up there by Cornell. Dennis Brown, the leading scorer for the Big Red, sends the puck in down low where it's picked up there by Prisdak. Puck sent up to Ethan Kanoff where he will send the puck up and it's P.J. Abbott leading the rush. The goal scorer fires one on net, handcuffs Siegel just a little bit, but it's played out of harm's way. wonder if Niagara's just going to fire everything at the net now. That, uh, that, that save wasn't exactly the smoothest one from Siegel. I don't think you want to necessarily let him gain confidence as, uh, as talented as he is in net. Maybe a, a little bit of the early game nerves might be something Niagara likes to, might try to take advantage of here. Just fire as many shots in on goal as possible right now. Sent, puck sent back to the point and a good side step there by Euler and here comes Niagara three on one. Euler over the line, sends the puck back and the Ooh. puck is just lost there at the last second there by Jake Franklin. That would have been a glorious opportunity. Here comes Cornell looking to spring. Great play. Yeah, looking to spring Allen, but Wojciechowski makes a really nice play and now the puck is gonna be sent back by Jake Franklin. Franklin gets through his check, but the puck hits a skate and here comes Luke Kratzios gaining the blue line. Kratzios dodges the stick check by Briggs and is going in alone, looking Ooh. to toe drag, but right at the last second, Brady Kanoff finishes him off. Nothing there for Luke Kratzios. A great rush by the big forward for the Big Red, but great defense also by Brady Kanoff. And we're going to get a face off coming up to the right of Josh LaSalle. Yeah, the veteran uh, defenseman there for Niagara, Brady Kanoff, is uh, one of the better players that you're going to see in terms of a one on one in this league. It's going to take a pretty good move and a lot of speed to sneak around him like that. He read that one pretty nicely and didn't give uh, the Cornell forward a whole lot of room to make that move and to get around him in the offensive end. Here comes Riddle down the left wing, puck over the line. Riddle looking to wind it up behind the line. Kratzios closes him off, and the puck is picked up there by Bradley Wang. But the puck is kept in there by Case Cook, but it hits a shin guard, and Ni Niagara will need to regroup. Puck picked up there by Luke Cross, and Luke Cross will send the puck to Case Cook. Nice little heel drag to get away from his man, and the puck will be sent up to Kroll. Confident heel drag there, too. Very. Here comes Cornell, and they just lose the puck over the blue line, and Riddle picks the puck up through the neutral zone. Side steps a hit there, will get the puck, try to get the puck in deep. He's got support here. Puck sent in front, walking in. Big save there by Jeremy Siegel on Thomason, and that was the save. Yep, 
put the pucks there on Siegel, but he's gaining some confidence now, which is a good sign for the Big Red. That's the save that Cornell needed from their netminder to make sure that he is still on top of his, uh, his game here tonight. They've been riding him for a good bit this season. They have the five-headed goaltending monster at Cornell, and uh, the, uh, the netminder number one, Siegel, is getting the nod here in the playoffs. He was the winner in the quarterfinal game against Cortland. Obviously, they like to see him getting that confidence here in the, uh, about halfway through the first period. Puck sent in there to the Niagara zone where it's picked up there by P.J. Abbott. Abbott sends the puck up and it's chipped out where it's held there by Podmanabin as Cornell will tag up. The captain for the Big Red back pedals into his own zone and he's looking to send the puck up to Alvarez, but it's then sent into NU territory where Kroll will send the puck in deep. Siegel, Siegel slows the puck in down low and it's picked up there by Joey Podmanabin. And Yu's just slowing him down. And Padmanabhan sends one up the boards, and the trap works as it's picked up there by, by Pristal. And then it's then immediately sent back in by Alvarez. And both teams will get, some, will get some fresh legs onto the ice as P.J. Abbott looks to wind it up. Long pass ahead to Ethan Knopf. He's got it, and he holds over the line. They are on sides. Ethan Knopf gets over the blue line, sends it back to Abbott. Another point shot. This time, Siegel sees it all the way. Hits him right in the logo, and he will hold on for a faceoff. You're going to see a lot of play in this game, I think, in the neutral zone as both teams seem to be looking to clog the neutral zone as the opponent tries to get up ice. Clearly, that's what Niagara's been trying to do here. You saw that setup create a couple of turnovers there in that shift. They're looking to make sure that they get back in a strong defensive posture to make sure that Cornell has that much more of a difficulty getting the puck across the red line and into the offensive zone. It's already worked out to cause a couple turnovers so far. Yeah, and look for Niagara to keep that going because you can slow down Cornell's speed, especially from the back end. You're in good shape here. Franklin Berry running, doing a nice job to knock his man off the puck, and Cornell will look to gain possession as Brown looks to drop it back, but it's picked up there and sent back in by Niagara. Siegel picks up the puck where Franklin Berry will pick up behind his own net. He'll send a pass up to Dysert, and Dysert's met, and the puck is swept right off his stick where Brady can off. We'll send it through the neutral zone where it's picked up there by Harry Akins. Akins to Barry, who will then send it up to Dennis Brown. It will just miss his stick, and we will get an icing for another offensive zone faceoff for the Purple Eagles. Looks like he was trying to get that one-touch backhand pass through the legs in the neutral zone. Oh, that was Real cool. pretty when it, pay, when it pans out. That time, though, he just barely missed getting that little half of a touch on it that he needed to redirect it toward his teammate. Ends up going as an icing, and uh, this group from Cornell is going to have to stay out there for this defensive zone draw. Yeah, and they are, they've had some time in their defensive zone here, so they're going to look to get out and get some possession, maybe get a change. Brown gets the puck up to Dicer. Dicer looking to get the puck up to Cobb, but Cobb is unable to get the puck, and it's sent right back into his zone by the Purple Eagles. Brown tries it again. Little better result this time, but Niagara, Niagara's Euler sends the puck back to Franklin Berry. Yeah, again, you see Niagara making sure that they're disciplined out into the neutral zone, making sure that they're back in front of the, uh, the, the, fort, the, the, the breakout from Cornell making sure that they're in those passing lanes instead of chasing the play to get back defensively. Dysert will send the puck in deep and he will go off for a change. Dennis Brown in pursuit on Brady Knopf. Knopf looks to get out from behind the net. Brown is still in his back pocket, but he finds Franklin who will get the puck in deep. Niagara trying to make a change here. Oh gosh, get oh Siegel my. out of the net. Oh, where did we, we saw that recently, didn't we? Still got to get back in there. Fortunately for him, that shot right into the bread basket. Yep, Stumpo just gets the shot knowing that, you know, the goaltender and the defense are just scrambling right there. Kind of puts one on net and Siegel kind of grabs the puck and clings to it for dear life to get the face off so Cornell can get their wits about them again and try to break out. Always a dangerous moment, a scary moment where half the arena is going to hold its breath when the goaltender comes out of his net and it's a, still a 50-50 puck at best. That was one of those cases there. The uh, Cornell netminder fortunate that that one didn't go in the wrong direction for his side. Yes, he certainly is, as Niagara has applied all the pressure so far in this period. Other than the one great scoring chance by Dicer, this period for the first 10 minutes and change has been all Niagara. Here comes Max Miller. He'll send the puck in and will chase, but Case Cook will pick up the puck and he will send the puck up to Riddle. Riddle gaining the line, coming with the blue line. Riddle throws one to the back door, nobody there. Zach Briggs picks up the puck on the half wall, sends the puck in on Siegel where it's steered away. Riddle picks up the puck and looks to wind it around and is then picked up there by Briggs. Puck is slapped at, just kind of bouncing around in the slot. Cornell comes up with a good breakout pass, but just a little too hot to handle for Matthew Weinstein. It will end up on net though, so Cornell will finally get out of their own end and they'll be able to get an offensive zone face off. Smart play by Max Miller there in his own zone. That was a bouncing puck that was rolling towards the slot 
He didn't really have a good play on it with the stick. He made sure he got enough of it with the skate to get it off to a more safe area up against the near boards. Then his teammates uh, got did the rest of the work and got the puck up ice. Now they get this offensive zone draw. Benko wins the face off and it's sent back to the point shot, blown into shin guards and sent back to Podmanabin. Podmanabin takes a shot tipped just wide and the puck is then picked up by Marcus Bratton. Bratton, nice move to get around his man. And then he sends it D to D and it's picked up and Bratton again, just a little too far for him. And Cornell will look to go the other way. Bratton had plenty of speed there too. That's a guy that you don't want to see get the puck with a head of steam in the neutral zone if you're a defender. No, Bratton can really fly right here. So Cornell's lucky they got him to give up the puck right there. Puck picked up there by Zach Wiener. Wiener will go behind the net. Wiener pops out right there and it's sent over to Julian Bement. Bement sends the puck up where it's held there by Sean Benko and he will get it to center ice where it's picked up there by PJ Abbott. Nice, no look pass there. And the puck is picked up and coming in by Nicholas Mandia. Thomason sends the puck in front, but Podmanabin with a good stick picks it up, but then he loses it, and Ethan Kanoff will go the other way, and he will get on his edges, and the puck will be sent right back down low. Good back pressure there from Mandy as he uh, made sure he was coming back hard in the, in the offensive zone. A little stick lift there, ended up creating another opportunity in the offensive zone before he went for a change. Scanlon fires a puck from the blue line. It's held there by Siegel with the glove, and he will hold on, and we will have a faceoff in the Cornell end with 7.30 to go in the first period. And our coverage of the UNYCHL is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility. Simulators, lessons, leagues. Buffalo Golf and Social is the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. Also a great selection of beer and wine, so the perfect place to sit and watch golf with others who love the game. Locations downtown and in Orchard Park. Book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. Puck sent in by Niagara, where it's picked up there by Franklin Berry. Berry looking to call the play from behind the net, where he will send the puck up to Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown through the neutral zone with speed. Sidesteps Chad Moore. Brown again, inside, outside, and again, a great defensive play by Brady Kanoff. Cornell is trying him with the moves. What a hit by, Her by Franklin Berry. He puts Scanlon on the deck. And Cornell looking to go into transition right here. Scanlon back on his skates and back in the play, though. Good to see him uh, shake that one off quickly. Oh, oh Scanlon's a tough kid. He's gonna, he's actually going to be better for that. He's, he's the kind of player where he needs to get popped once, and then he gets back into the game. So I expect Scanlon to get a fire lit under him. But again, great physical play by the big, smooth skating defenseman, Franklin Barrier. We've seen a lot of him this year. He is tough to play against, and he showed it right there, Aaron. Those are some of my favorite type of players, the ones who uh, only can get up to about 80 for 85 percent speed until they take that hit. Then they find that extra gear or two and get it up to 105, 110 percent. Alex Allen shot off the face off. Aaron, we have seen that play a hundred times by this team, and it works right there, but a great save by LaSalle. Physical play continuing here as Alex Allen down low, still looking to fish it down, does a great job of not allowing Niagara to get possession and go the other way. And now they do. Here comes Euler, sends the puck up, and then it's picked up there, and Alex Allen again. I expect the Cornell coaching staff to put him out, on, out there a lot more. He is the player that will match Niagara's physicality, and that's what they need right now. Also, he'll infect energy into the rest of the lineup with just the way he plays. I mean, he'll get me fired up, so I can only imagine what being on the ice with him is like. Shot from the point there, saved there by, by Siegel. Did not, did not hold it cleanly. Puck is fired down, though, but Cornell will get down there first. That's a great check. That's a great forecheck by Matthew Weinstein to wave off the icing. Niagara University trying to go the length of the ice, and Podman Aban will take the puck off Euler, and he will send the puck up to Max Miller. Miller through the neutral zone where it's tipped up by Sean Benko. He's going to get it deep, and he's going to chase after it. Abbott and Benko in pursuit. Abbott gets there first, but the shot taken, and it's just wide by Julian Bement. Good hustle to keep the line there, and then almost got the shot right in on net, too. Yeah, it was a great play there by Cornell, but here comes Niagara. They're little on their heels, but look uh -oh. at the speed here by Riddle, but a good recovery there by Zach, by Zach Wiener. But a turnover down low and a big save there by Jeremy Siegel, and the puck is still loose. Oh, the ref waved, the ref waved it dead. Niagara's not going to love that call. They have a gripe. Cornell's going to love that call, and they're not going to say a word because they were scrambling there, but they got the whistle. Yeah, and they get the uh, change in on the back end, too. Those two defenders have been out there for a fair bit. at dealt with, like, two or three different pushes into the offensive zone by Niagara. So the uh, quick whistle there, certainly a, a beneficial one for the Cornell, Cornell Big Red. Franklin Berry will send the puck through the neutral zone where it's picked up there by Niagara. Sean Banco will send the puck over the blue line, but that's as far as he's gonna go for PJ Abbott, puts it on Riddle. Riddle drops it back and Niagara University will look to gain the line. That is Jacob Pristall. Pristall fires one wide and it's gonna come around, but it's gonna be kept in there by the goal scorer, PJ Abbott. 
Abbott sends one down, but Dennis Brown picks off that pass, and then it's going to be Kratzios looking to spring Dysert. Here comes Dysert down the right wing. Dysert puts on the brakes, and then a great defensive play by Pristol. Cornell wants a penalty there. No call, and we play on. P.J. Abbott sends the puck up to Jacob Pristal. He's looking for Riddle, but it's then turned back in by Cornell. A little bit of a clog in the neutral zone. There's, a, there's, so, there's clamoring for too many men, but the refs are not going to call it, and we're going to continue as Pristal gets the puck behind his own net. Always a danger when the puck comes in front of the bench when there's a change going on. Padmanabhan looks to send it deep. It is deflected by a Niagara stick. That was Thomason. It will go out of play. We will have a whistle. Like Aaron said, those are dangerous, trying, nerve-wracking moments when you're trying to change and the puck is sitting there because usually you want to touch the puck, but when you're changing, you might have too many men. That puck becomes a grenade and you want to avoid it at all costs. And the opposite bench is immediately going to be calling for the too many men penalty, even if it isn't happening. Whether or not the it's the look of too many men on the ice, the opposing bench is always going to call for it. Whether or not they get the call to their benefit doesn't really matter. It at least gets the idea in the referee's mind. Here comes Bratton. He's got speed, but a really good stick there, and it's knocked off him. That was Murphy Klein. Dennis Brown has the puck in the corner, and then he loses the puck to Bratton. And then Siegel, oh, and then, uh, oof. Net coming off, saves Siegel in that case. That's been a couple of quick whistles that, that have gone the way of Cornell. In this case, it is the uh, net coming off on the near mooring. I'm not really sure what the argument about the whistle is. The net came off, and the Niagara coaching staff is very upset right now. Um, but be that as it may, we're going to have a um, we are going to have a faceoff coming up to the left of Siegel. I mean, in their defense, there have been two very quick whistles that have ended potential scoring chances. So I get it, but that time the net was off the packs. Puck sent around by Murph to Murphy Klein, where it will be sent back, and it will be held there by Bradley Wang. Wang pops out from behind his net, and he will skate it up. Puck sent through the neutral zone by Dysert, and in deep where Dennis Brown and Alex Cobb will be in pursuit of Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski will send the puck up where it's picked up there by Mangia. A little bit of a battle to keep it in, but Thomason, nice footwork to get the puck over the neutral, the, uh, excuse me, by over center ice, and then the puck is sent across where it's picked up there by Klein. Klein skates it into the neutral zone, tries to put a backhand pass on the stick of Cobb, and it's met there by Ethan Knopf, and Niagara University is going to go the other way, but again, it's picked up there by the captain, Padmanabhan. He will get out of his own end, but he only gets as far as center ice before Niagara sends the puck back in deep. Starting, starting to see a little bit of that chess match here, Sean, with uh, Niagara trying to clog the neutral zone and force Cornell over to one side or the other to trap them and force turnovers. Meanwhile, Cornell's trying to slow down and be a little bit patient on their breakouts to try to get Niagara to tip their hand and cheat to one side. D to D, D, to D pass over to Allen, who's down low from his forward position. And again, it's picked up there by Niagara University in the neutral zone. So like Aaron has said, wait a second, here comes Alex Allen. Oh, and then he just, he just pushes it ahead of himself. He was one-on-one -on -one with Case Cook, but here comes Max Miller. Max Miller shaves off a Case Cook hit, but then Scanlon will pick up the loose puck and try to get it out. Alex Allen down low sends the puck to Max Miller, looking in front and a good stick there by Case Cook. Ethan Knopf through the neutral zone. He's got Chad Moore with him. Oh, and just great team defense there by the Big Red. Looking to spring somebody, but again, these quick sticks by Niagara getting in just about every passing lane. No pass more than 10 feet is uncontested, except for right here. Here comes Cornell. Takes the shot, saved there by LaSalle. And that's, the, and that's a good high danger scoring chance by Turner Aldrich. Puck picked up there by Euler. Euler going down the line. Euler looks to get around his man, Zach Wiener, but the puck just gets a little far ahead of him and Siegel will cover for the faceoff as we go. Have two minutes and 14 seconds left in this opening period. Seemed like the type of period that was going to be played a lot in the neutral zone initially with both teams trying to clog that center ice area to make things difficult on the opposing side. That shift had started to open up just a little bit, Sean. Yep, and that's something I expect to happen at some point in this game where we get the track meet that we know both teams are capable and like to play. Shot from Knopf, and it's saved there by Jeremy Siegel. Euler will pick up the puck on the half wall. Sends it up to Brady Knopf, who will tip it ahead, where then it's going to be picked up, but not out as it's picked up there by Brady Knopf. Sent down low to Jake Franklin. Franklin will send the puck back to Brady Knopf. Knopf looks to walk the line, sends a point shot. That one gets blocked in front of the net, and Cornell will look to transition. It will be Julian Bamen, and he's met by Jake Franklin. It dislodges him from the puck, and Brady Knopf will gather the puck in his own end while he will put it into the neutral zone. Kratzios picks up the puck. Oh, and Brady Knopf just goes up way high on Julian Bament. They got it, 
And Brady Knopf is gonna take a penalty and this might be the open door Cornell's gonna need to get this thing tied, get some offensive zone pressure. Effort play by Brady Knopf, went a little high on him. The refs are gonna call that every time and Cornell heads to the power play. Yeah, the game started with a pair of Niagara opportunities with the man advantage. Now it's the uh, Cornell Big Red going to the power play. They trail one nothing, we're under two minutes to go in the period, big opportunity for the Big Red. Padmanabhan at the point will send the puck down low. In the middle to Dicer. Dicer turns and shoots, and he had Dennis Brown there, but he couldn't connect on the pass. Podmanabin has it now on the point. He has Max Miller on one wing and Cobb on the other. Cobb looks for the far post, doesn't hit it. Podmanabin skates it down. Oh, okay. Yep, that that puck got out. Podmanabin doesn't like the call, but I think he, I don't, that was close. I think it was out, but either way, the ref has declared offsides, and that will be the call. That's on the far side here where. Uh we're not right, looking right down the blue line, so perhaps not our best angle. That the, the linesman also was here on the near side, but he was looking straight down the blue line. Going to give him the benefit of the doubt, even though the uh, Cornell captain and, and defenseman certainly not agreeing with that call. No, but unfortunately, you can't overturn. You can't overturn it offsides, and Cornell will gain possession with Dysert in the neutral zone. Dysert will send the puck to Cobb. Cobb will gain the puck, and he will send it down low and chase after it with Dennis Brown on him. Puck picked up there by Jacob Pristall, and he will send the puck the length of the ice on Jeremy Siegel, and Cornell will retreat with one minute left in the first period. Padmanabhan will head behind his net. He will give the puck to Dysart, and Dysart will look to quarterback the power play from here. Ooh. Dysart takes a big hit, and they're gonna call that as well. And, that, oh, that yeah, Dysart's down too, so we're gonna have a five on three uh, for Cornell for a minute and 11 seconds, but the concern is on Dysart, because we need, because you know, he is a huge player in this game. Yeah, P.J. Abbott laying that hit in the neutral zone. Dicer tried to step around it, but they ended up taking the brunt of it right knee to knee. And uh, That hurts, we've all been, but that's happened to me, Aaron, that hurts. Yeah, you saw P.J. Abbott trying to argue that it was with the shoulder, but getting a glance at a replay, that was uh, that was leg first in terms of where the contact was. Certainly good to see Dicer get back to his skates. I don't think they're gonna let him stay on the ice though because he was down for a period of time. Yeah, the referee over there telling him he's gonna have to go to the bench. Yes, and also we, I do wanna point out, like we know that that was very unintentional by PJ Abbott. He was going for the hit. Dicer tried to avoid him. This is more of a safety call than it is a malicious intent. PJ Abbott is not that kind of player and we all know that. Unfortunate, but luckily at the end of the day, Dicer's okay, but Cornell is gonna head to a power play. Um, five on three from a minute, 11 seconds. This is huge for them. Uh, but Pristo looking to get it out, and he will get it out of the zone. Briggs will gain the gain center ice and send it down low. So that's what you needed to do if you were Niagara. Cornell's going to have about 30 seconds to work with his five on three to finish the period. Picked up there by Alex Cobb. Cobb will go through the neutral zone. Cobb looking to go inside, outside, and he does. And then a sneak angle shot there by LaSalle. Ooh, and then it's mm. two hacks from the netminder LaSalle there. He doesn't like that extra poking for that, that, that loose puck. Yeah, Dysart poked at it twice. And yeah, I mean, that'll happen when you poke the goaltender. Luckily, it, was, it looked like it was just a tap, nothing crazy, but I think Dysart's okay. Down two men, that's not a bad play from the goaltender. It's gonna take a lot for them to call that penalty on you with the uh, five on three already going on. Oh yeah. So uh, make sure you establish your crease in that moment. Smart play by the uh, by the netminder from Ottawa, Canada. Absolutely, uh, yeah, protect your crease, gotta defend yourself because you're watching the puck. Yep, nothing, no issue with anything there. Dennis Brown sends the puck where it's held there by Cornell, Max Miller. Running out Mil of time. Back to Brown in front, oh, they had it there and they just missed on it. Oh, Dysart had it on the doorstep, but instead of going high, he tried to tap it in and LaSalle had one play to make throw his pad out there, that was the play, and LaSalle makes his best save of the night. And yeah, they had the setup they were looking for, they kind of slowed it down and then fed it from high to low and then across the goal crease. They had the goaltender beat, but they just uh, just not quick enough with that shot. Maybe just that half a second of settling it down would have been enough. for the buzzer beater, there's the shot and a great block there Stumpo. by number five Stumpo. And that is how the period will end as the Purple Eagles will take a one nothing lead into the second period. Our coverage for this, for this weekend's Final Four is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility. Simulators, lessons, leagues, Buffalo Golf and Social is the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. Also, a great selection of beer and wine. It is the perfect place to sit and watch golf with others who love the game. Locations downtown Buffalo and Orchard Park, New York. Book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. 
This broadcast is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and expertise of Militello Realty. Give them a call at 716-856-2872 or at Militello.com. By West Her, the largest automotive dealer group in New York State, selling over 50,000 pre-owned cars, pre-owned new cars every year to customers in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. West Her Auto, dedicated to absolute excellence and customer service. By Envious Gameware, designers of high-end custom hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel. The thinking of look good and feel good, look good, feel good, play good, goes into every Envious jersey design. Find them at enviousgameware.com to get your team a look to be envious of. And finally, by 412 Communications, the new gold standard in digital media solutions, offering consultations for web and graphic design, social media writing and editing services, multimedia solutions, and much more. Visit 412communications.com to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. Aaron, it was an early power play goal on a power play off the hop for Niagara, then a second penalty that gets them on the board, and then Cornell's gonna have an opportunity to answer in the same fashion in the second period. Yeah, still gonna be a little carryover time on the five on three for the Cornell Big Red as we get going in second period play. Big opportunity for them to start second period play and get back even here in this game. As we mentioned, right off the start, it was Niagara getting a bench minor penalty power play from a bench minor penalty against Cornell. There was another penalty taken with just eight seconds remaining on that first one. Eventually Niagara got the power play goal. That's how they have the one nothing lead after 20 minutes of play. But it will be the Cornell power play getting things going when we get ready for second period action. That'll just about do it for first period of play. We will step away for a moment and bring you back for second period action in about 10 minutes. You are watching the UNYCHL Tier 1 semifinal on Nickel City Hockey Network.
Bridges have connected people for centuries. When it comes to helping small businesses build bridges with the people they serve, there's a new gold standard. 412 Communications offers a uniquely comprehensive array of media solutions to help your brand establish and maintain strong, lasting connections with your clientele. People ask, what is Buffalo Golf and Social? Buffalo Golf and Social is anything you want it to be. It can be the best instruction. It can be a vibe. It can be a hangout with your friends, running a simulator for four hours, playing your own playlist, and putting a game up on the TV. We are about everything and anything pertaining to golf. And most importantly, we are trying to build a community of players and a community of people who love and are dedicated to the game. Thank you. 
and welcome back inside Northwest Arena at Jamestown, New York, where we are just about ready to begin second period play between the Niagara University Purple Eagles and the Cornell Big Red. Niagara University leads the period 1-0 on a power play goal early by defenseman P.J. Abbott. We had a lot of back and forth in neutral zone play, but towards the end of the period, Niagara took two penalties and Cornell will start the period on the power play. Before we get started, our coverage is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility with simulators, lessons, and leagues. Buffalo Golf and Social is the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. Also a great selection of beer and wine, making it the perfect place to sit and watch the game of golf with others who love it. Locations in downtown Buffalo and Orchard Park, New York. Book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. Puck is dropped here and the five on three continues for the Cornell Big Red for another 19 seconds as Cobb will get the puck into the neutral zone where he is met there by Thomason. Great Cobb. play by Thomason to just kill off a little bit of time and make it that much more uh, difficult just for Cornell to get things set up in the offensive zone. They still haven't even gotten into the opposing blue line yet. That essentially killed the beginning penalty and Cornell will have about 45 seconds to work with here as Aiden Cobb will gain the blue line. Cobb sends the puck to Dennis Brown, goes through his legs, and the puck will be fired down the ice by Joe Stumpo, where Cornell will retreat with Podmanabin. Podmanabin dips behind his net where he will leave the puck, and it will be picked up there by Dicer. Dicer will drop the puck back to Podmanabin, and he will skate it, gain the blue line, send the puck up to Aiden Cobb, who will then just chop the puck in deep, where the goaltender LaSalle will drop it, and Niagara University will clear it the length of the ice with just 15 seconds remaining in the power play. Siegel drops the puck off for Max Miller and lacking communication right there as Niagara University will get the puck and they will just send the puck back in deep and this will kill the five on three. Great work by the Purple Eagles to get out of there unscathed. Yeah, you want to credit the Purple Eagles for the penalty kill and they definitely did a good job doing what they needed to do there, but uh, the Cornell power play certainly stuck in neutral, certainly helped them out in that cause as well. And that this is a power play that was like lethal at times this season like you were basically you there were times when you'd be better off just putting a goal up on the board when you give Cornell a power play not the case here Cornell will send the puck in and we're again clogged in the neutral zone here but the puck is picked up here by Cornell it is Kratzios turns and fires puts it just wide of the near post Akins will chip the puck in and then in Sean Benko will chase after where Brady Kanoff will gather Brady Kanoff with two guys on him will send it up and a good pinch there by Franklin Berry to send the puck back down low where Brady Kanoff will recover. Cornell defensemen have been aggressive along the blue line in the offensive zone. We've seen them jumping on the play. Even those 50-50 pucks coming up their boards, they've been aggressive at those points. Chad Moore will look to turn around and shoot the puck. That will get blocked and head into the corner and it will be picked up there by Cornell. Franklin Berry will send the puck high through the neutral zone and Julian Bement in pursuit. The icing is waved off as Brady Kinoff sends the puck back for Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski sends the puck up to the neutral zone where Franklin doesn't get it out and Cornell will send it back where Wojciechowski will send it to Brady Kinoff. Brady Kinoff will send the puck through the neutral zone. Little high, little far. Looks like he went 5-R and we meant to go pitching wedge and we will have an icing and the faceoff will be in the Niagara University end want to track back to the start of the game there was the penalty given out right at the opening faceoff right at the 20 minute mark before we even got started it was a uh, protocol violation bench minor against Cornell they did not have their proper starting lineup on the ice to begin the game the Niagara coaching staff alert to that fact made sure that they told the referees about it and they got a power play out of it it was at the end of that power play that they ended up getting a second one on that one is when they got their goal so uh Good work from the entirety of the Niagara program, not only with their players on the ice doing their job, but the coaching staff being alert to the fact that Cornell had a different five on the ice than they originally planned on starting. Yeah, heads up play by everybody on the ice and the coaching staff. I mean, this is something we've grown accustomed to. This Niagara University team is very prepared. Dennis Brown in loses the puck on the poke check there by LaSalle, and we will have another faceoff. Cornell starting the period on the power play this time and then playing at even strength doing a much better job getting early pressure in the Niagara University zone. This will come a long way to helping them find their game and getting back to the skating track meet game, starting from their back end that we're used to seeing. Keep an eye on these face-offs in the offensive zone for Cornell. Both teams like to run set plays. 
Cornell likes to do a set play here in the offensive zone with a quick draw back and a shot in on goal. Niagara trying to set up their set play there off the quick win and then a playoff to the streaking winner, winger in the neutral zone. Good read there by Cornell to make sure that that play didn't work out. Both sides are going to try to make sure that they accomplish what they practice a lot in those offensive zone draws for Cornell. Puck sent back to Case Cook there. He will hold up the blue line. Shot on goal there. Little bit of tripping there. Not a penalty though. And Cornell will get it out. But only as far as Stumpo at center ice. So he will send it into the offensive zone. Podmanabin will retreat back into his own end. I feel like he's going to play more minutes than the goaltender tonight because he is on the ice all the time. No shortage of good defenders though from Cornell. We mentioned early on in the broadcast that they derive a lot of their power from their back end. They have three strong pairs that they can throw out there, but obviously Podmanabin is the one that they rely on the most. Riddle gets in behind the defense and walking in, takes a shot and he scores! Quick outlet pass by the Purple Eagles. Matthew Riddle picks up the puck on the blue line, puts it into gear, blows by his defenseman. Gets one on one with the goaltender Siegel, rips one far side, and the Purple Eagles take a 2 0 lead. Just had that extra half a step on the defenseman, quickly turned up ice and got north, drove in towards the net, saw the lane over the left hand glove of the, of the netminder, perfectly placed shot. Niagara with the 2 0 lead now. Yeah, and Cornell was having a good period as well. They had a great start to it, they were getting pressure. But NU, like you said, Aaron, they loved that stretch pass. They got, they got Riddle behind the forwards. Riddle had the defense and back paddling while he had the speed, got by him, gets a shot in on goal, and NU takes a 2-0 lead early in the period. And Cornell looking to get back into it as it is picked up there by Pristal. Good pressure there by Cornell, but the puck will be picked up by Damon Fierro, where he will give it to Pristal back to Fierro, trying to play a two-man game on the wall. But great job by Kratzios to keep the puck in. Here comes Sean Benko. Benko down low as Bement adding some pressure. Here comes Kratzios again. And the, again, Cornell, they're sending some meat out there to try and keep the puck in deep and wear these Purple Eagles down. But they're mat they're being matched with equal intensity, kept in there by Franklin Berry to Kratzios. Kratzios wrist shot high and just goes over the net. Picked up there by Akins. Benko, good pressure there, picks up the puck here, but then Abbott recovers and he will send the puck out of the zone. And here's another race for it as Cornell will get there first as that time it was Matt, it, excuse me, it was Aiden Cobb that sends the puck up to Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown, sweet drop pass there to Dicer with a shot off the goal post. Or a blocker, I don't know what that hit, but that was a hard shot. And here comes Niagara with Euler. Euler, heel drag, and just at the very last second, it appeared that it was deflected by Bradley Wang, and then Jeremy Siegel gets his blocker on it, but NU looking to put some pressure on here. Brady Kanoff sends the puck down low where it's picked up by Bratton. Bratton gets the puck back behind his own, behind the net, sends it there to Thomason. Thomason popping out of the corner, sends it down low to Bratton, where, down low where it's picked up there by Bratton. Bratton gets the puck down low where there it's held there by Matthew Kroll. Kroll takes the hit and then gets it to Thomason. Thomason in front, saved by Siegel, rebound, and they're just not able to put it home. But again, NU is working way below the dots here. Shot by Thomason, nice glove there on the short side by Jeremy Siegel, and he has had enough of this nonsense, and he will hold for a whistle. And yep, like we said, Podman Obbins coming right back onto the ice after that. Yeah, that was a uh, long shift there for the Cornell Big Red here in the second period with the long change. That was one where they actually had a great start to the shift, a great response to the Niagara goal, just like they had in the first period after Niagara scored. The shift went on a little bit too long, however, and then they got hemmed in their own zone Two great scoring opportunities from the Purple Eagles, then another one right there off the draw. Yeah, Chad Moore just missing wide, and Cornell trying to hit the line with speed, but it's picked up there by Stumpo. Stumpo will send the puck in his hat, shift back out into the zone where it's gathered by Cornell, and they're going to send it back, and we're going to play a little bit of Pong with the puck here until Chad Moore picks up the puck. Moore looking to shoot it low. That shot is blocked, and Alex Allen will pick up the puck, and he will reverse ice to Zach Wiener. Wiener looking to carry it out. He'll get the bounce here. Alex Allen in pursuit on Stumpo. Who's going to get there first? Great play by Stumpo to absorb the hit by the much bigger Alex Allen and then cause a turnover for, then cause it to go neutral zone the other way. Ethan Kanoff gets buried by two men, but he makes the play and he gets the puck up to Chad Moore. Moore gets the puck to Case Cook, fires one on net, just sent wide. A couple puck. of great plays here so far from Stumpo on the defensive end for Niagara. Maybe not the first defenseman you think of when you think about this Purple Eagles team, but that shows you the depth they have. Yeah, he might not be the first one you think of, but you sure can forget him, especially not today. And Cornell looking to get some pressure here. 
Kratzios loses the puck, and here's Riddle again. He's behind him again. Riddle one on one with Franklin Barry. Riddle on his back end, but this time the defenseman wise to the task as Franklin Barry does a nice job of using his size and length to kind of shrug Riddle off to the side to prevent a scoring chance. But here's Riddle down low again. Yeah, Barry not just using his size there, but kept his feet moving. That's what he had to do to make sure he stayed with Riddle. That was uh, not only the physical play with the upper body, but he had to keep his legs churning because Riddle had a ton of speed coming into the offensive zone. And the, just the dogged determination on the forecheck by Niagara continues as they are making every inch of ice very difficult to gain for Cornell. Puck sent in deep where it's slowed down there by Jeremy Siegel. Siegel will send the puck up, and it will be held there by... Excuse me, it'll be held there by Bement. Bement loses it in the neutral zone, and Brady Kanoff will send it down low, steered away by Siegel. Akins meets Briggs right there, and it's picked up there by Damon Fiera, where now the puck is picked up there by Julian Bement. He will send the puck off the boards, gets by one, and here comes Kratzios, and LaSalle's going to come out to play it as Kratzios is down there first. A little bit of contact there, maybe just enough not to draw the penalty. It got some attention from Kanoff, however. Here comes Wojciechowski over the line. Wojciechowski looking to go down low, but a good defensive stick there by Franklin Barry. Puck sent to the points of Brady Kanoff. He will send the puck down lower. Barry will pick up the puck below his goal line. Little shimmy shake, but the point man was leaving the zone early, and Niagara's able to just send the puck back in deep where Euler will pick it up. Euler sends the puck down low to Franklin. Franklin, with a man on him, drops it back to Bratton. Bratton chips it around him where he will contain the puck, but it's knocked off his stick there by Kratzios. Again, though, Cornell cannot get the puck out, and NU just sends it back on the goaltender. Now there will be a whistle, and Cornell will get the change, as will NU, as it looks like both teams are going to wholesale this one. Yeah, the Cornell for or, sorry, the Niagara forecheck has been just causing a ton of havoc here in the second period. It was obviously established well in the first period, but you're starting to see the extra pressure here in period number two. These last couple of shifts, probably the last three minutes or so of game time, they have been a force in the offensive zone. We're going to have to see whether or not Cornell can make the adjustments and get that puck up ice a little bit smoother. So far, it's been uh, Niagara hunting pucks in the offensive zone and then getting in the passing lanes when they don't have it. Puck in the neutral zone by Pristol. He will send the puck back to P.J. Abbott, who then will look to send it to Kroll. Good stick there by Cornell, and the puck will go all the way down the ice. Puck shipped ahead there by... Puck chipped ahead there by Bradley Wang, and now Cornell looking two on two. Here's Aiden Cobb and Dennis Brown, and again, a great back check by Niagara, and they will go the other way. Here comes Thomason. Thomason gains the line, gets by one. Thomason looking to go inside, outside. Good stick by Podmanabin, and then a good poke check, diving poke check there by Jeremy Siegel. Thomason looking to gain possession. He's just going to send it back to Abbott, and Niagara will reset their offense. Abbott sends the, sorry, Aaron, go ahead. Niagara's just had that extra step here in the period. They've been quicker to those loose pucks, and they've uh, gotten into those lanes to uh, go and get those loose pucks. Certainly have, uh, have Cornell a little bit on their heels here as we approach ha the halfway mark of the game. Case Cook with a head of steam coming through the neutral zone. He gains the blue line. He's by the defenseman. Cook looking to wind around the corner on that. Looking in front, Padmanabin gets a skate, and Abbott goes right back to Cook who's just got all kinds of speed, takes a shot just wide of the glove hand of Jeremy Siegel. Max Miller will pick up the puck and he will dip below the line. We have two guys going down, no penalty here. Puck in front, takes a shot by Scanlon and a great chest save there by Jeremy Siegel as the forward Logan Scanlon got into a high danger scoring opportunity and Siegel stands tall and makes the save and he will hold on for the whistle. Might be some uh, smelling of blood in the water here from Niagara here in the last few minutes. They've been buzzing in the offensive zone. Plenty of shots on goal, plenty of opportunities from that high danger area in front of the netminder Siegel. The uh, Cornell team's gonna have to start to do a little bit of extra work just to get that possession. Another quick shot off the faceoff there. Niagara's uh, knocking on the door for that third one right now. Yeah, Niagara again doing a great job keeping the puck as far away from their net as they can be. Here's Chad Moore coming out of the loose puck where it's picked up by Stumpo. Stumpo pedals the blue line and a great block there and it's kept in there. That was Matthew Weinstein, the great block. Scanlon sends the puck. We're looking to get down low. Big save there by Jeremy Siegel. Cook sends the puck over to Stumpo. Stumpo gathers the puck on the half wall where he'll send it down below, and what the, that was pretty cool. Alex Allen will gather the puck, and he will look for a pass, and he will send the puck up where it's taken right back there by Case Cook. He has been everywhere tonight, and here he comes again. Case Cook through the neutral zone. Loses the puck at the blue line, and here comes Cornell looking to turn it up here. Here comes Matthew Weinstein. Weinstein takes a shot from distance. No trouble there by Josh LaSalle. 
trouble there. That's and yep, unnecessary. Yeah, you can't be doing that. And Case Cook is going to take a roughing penalty. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what he felt the need there was because Miller was just there in front of the goaltender. I didn't even think he dug at a rebound there and uh, got the quick response like he slashed at the goaltender. He just kind of skated in front of the goalie and then got horse collared essentially in front of the net by Cook. I mean, unless he said something to him, but even then, I don't know. I mean, I get it's been a physical game, so I, I have a feeling Case Cook had just accepted that it was going to happen and he had made his decision. Tough penalty to take. Niagara's been great on the penalty kill, and they'll look to do that again as Max Miller holds the puck down, and he will send a cross-ice pass. Down low it goes there to Dysert. Dysert has Aiden Cobb in support with him over here, and then he's got Dennis Brown behind him. Brown, but again, Niagara is just glued to all the forwards here for Cornell. They have nowhere to move. Here comes Cobb again. Sends the puck to Brown. Just a little trouble handling that puck, but Brown picks it up again, and he drops it off. And now Siegel, will, excuse me, LaSalle will reach out. And he, will, and he will pick up the puck, and we will be good to go as we will get a face-off coming up to the left of, jo of Josh LaSalle. A little bit better setup here on this power play for Cornell than they had on their previous two attempts around the end of the first period, then the start of the second. Haven't really gotten it established in an area where they get any real quality chances, however, but this is the longest time that they've actually gotten it setting up, set up in the offensive zone so far. Face-off won by Niagara, and Jacob Pristall will send the puck all the way down the ice. Siegel will slow it down, where the Cornell captain, Joey Padmanabhan, will pick up the puck, and he will drop it back. Puck is sent over to Dennis Brown, where he will send the puck up to Miller, where he will then hit Cobb, and Cobb will gain the line. Cobb just kind of floats one on net without before getting set up, and we're going to get another face-off. Um, I think you'd like to see Cornell set up the power play a little bit versus just take wrist shots from distance right now. Uh, but either, either way, though, they're going to get another offensive zone face off with a minute nine left to go in this penalty. Getting a fresh group out there are the Cornell Big Red. Also some changes coming from Niagara. See whether or not they can get that spacing and that formation set up here in the offensive zone. Might have a set play here off the face off as well. Face-off won by Logan Scanlon, where Stumpo's going to send it, but it's going to be picked up there by Harry Akins. Akins gets the puck back on the point. He goes D to D, but it's not able to be held there, And but it's picked up there and sent back to the point where Bradley Wang will hold it. Sent down low where it's sent, where it's sent around the boards by Henry Friedberg, but it's taken off his stick, and Niagara will clear. Siegel will send the puck up there where it's picked up by Cornell. Here they come. It's Franklin Berry. Franklin Berry sending a cross-ice pass to Alex Allen. Allen will chip the puck in deep, and Brady Knopf knocks him off his balance again. That's twice Brady Knopf. That's twice he's been knocking off his stick today, once by Stumpo, now by Allen. Harry Akins holds the puck there. He will send the puck over. Held there by Padmanabhan with a shot deflected, and it goes just wide. Akins, not, oh, sorry. Not really intense pressure here from Niagara, but just enough to make that passing that much more difficult. Allen with a long shot, big save there by Josh LaSalle and a rebound and a good defensive play there by Brady Knopf to prevent a scoring chance. And Niagara's just gonna tie the puck up on those boards. And now nope, there's a play to laying on the puck and we're gonna get a whistle. And that is actually gonna be more advantageous for Cornell than Niagara because Niagara's about to kill the rest of that penalty. Yeah, I think uh, that was a case of the rebound opportunity that Cornell was looking for. They had the men in front of the net. They just couldn't get to the exact right spot in that case in order to get a shot at knocking home that rebound quickly before LaSalle was able to get back into position. Just five seconds now remaining on this power play, and the faceoff is going to be in the neutral zone because it was a Cornell player that covered it. Faceoff, like you said, faceoff in the neutral zone, sent in down low by Julian Bement, but it's going to be picked up there by Jacob Pristall. Penalties over as Cook comes out and goes charging towards his bench to get a fresh Boy, skater out there. there fast. Pristall will send the puck up there, and they were looking for Riddle, but it's going to be tipped into the neutral zone where it's going to be sent in by Julian Bement, but doesn't get it deep, and Riddle's going to pick up the puck, and he's going to look to wind it through the neutral zone. Nice move by Riddle, and he gains the line. Riddle over the line, and he scores! Riddle picks up the puck and just winds it up, and Matthew Riddle does it himself, puts a move on a defenseman, backs the other two defenders off him, and just fires a wrist shot over the glove, and just like that, Matthew Riddle with his second of the period has the Niagara Purple Eagles up 3 0. Coast to coast, essentially, for the forward Matthew Riddle. That was the player that came onto the ice for the penalized player, Case Cook. Picked up the puck in the neutral zone, circled just inside of his own blue line, 
and then got that head of steam going up ice, made a great move in the neutral zone to get himself free of one defender, and then had plenty of room to let that shot go. Might have handcuffed the netminder a little bit because he put it into the uh, top corner of the net. He's getting, he's pulling him. And had the netminder leaning, and yeah, we have the goaltending change coming up now. Yep, it's going to be the Williamsville, New York native from Williamsville East, Matthew Small, the sophomore, coming in to replace Jeremy Siegel. So it looks like head coach um, Dave Cole is looking for a spark here, and they say you try the goaltender. So the, the Buffalo native, Matthew Small, will take over the rest of the game here for the remaining 6.30, and I would think they're a third period as well. Yeah, and I can't necessarily blame the Cornell staff for making this switch because that team is uh, current, the Big Red, they're on their heels right now here in this game. They need something as a wake-up call, something to spark them. Not surprising to see this change here. That was probably not the best goal that Siegel's ever given up in his life. I know that he probably wants that one back. Not necessarily uh, his fault in the previous two goals, but uh, not necessarily a, a surprise to see this change gotta given the something. way this game's going. Yeah, got to do something at this point because all the momentum's for Niagara and uh, any question mark, yeah, the season's on the line here in terms of the league playoffs. So yeah, so yeah, so Cornell, they make the move first. We'll see if it provides a spark as Harry Akins through his zone will send the puck up. PJ Abbott actually does end you does Cornell a favor as Franklin Berry will take a shot from a bad angle. Good save there by Josh LaSalle. Sees it all the way. No rebound. You're starting to see it, Aaron. Some banging sticks. Some look into the sky. Start to wonder, Aaron, is frustration starting to creep in for the big red? Well, they've certainly had to play a lot of this period in their own zone as Niagara has had almost all the momentum after the break coming out into this into the second period. Two minute rush to start the period for yeah. Cornell, it's been all in you since. Yeah, despite the fact that it was a Cornell power play to start the period, yeah. it was supposed to be a two man advantage with those first you know, 24 seconds that they had with the five on three. Thomason was over yeah. immediately. Yeah, Thomason essentially killed that off himself and then the uh, rest of the power play didn't do a whole lot. From then, it's been all Niagara here in the second. And they're looking for more as Ethan Knopf will send the puck in deep. Alex Allen sends it up to Max Miller. Jumps his stick, jumps Wojciechowski's stick, and he will send it back to Brady Kanoff, who will look for his brother, Ethan, who will send it over the line. And the captain, Padmanabhan, and Logan Scanlon will meet. And here comes Cornell looking to get it. But again, two men on the forecheck and another man in position. NU is set up beautifully, and they have just made life miserable, miserable for Cornell so far. Here they are keeping it again in at the point as Brady Kanoff steps around oh, the man and fires whoa. went in on net. Cold goalie. Yeah, first shot that, that Small had to face and a little bit of difficulty making that clean catch there with the blocker arm. And now we have uh, some conversation between Moore and Padmanabhan as they both go to their benches. Oh, and I, I know Chad Moore. I've had, the, I've had the fortunate luck of playing with him a couple times. He is not afraid. To, he's not afraid to get after you. He's not afraid of anybody, and he will get in anybody's face. And I guarantee you, he's out there doing a lot of the same in this important game here. And you looking to set up in the offensive zone again with Franklin taking the face off here against Sebastian Alvarez. And there we go. And he will win it. And another shot. And this time it's going to be covered again by Matthew Small. And we're going to get another face off. We're going to try it again. So Franklin and Alvarez on the dot again. Let's see if they can get a cleaner draw off this time. Puck sent back by Cornell where it's going to be sent around the boards. But again, great forechecking by Damon Fiera. And it's, again, just Cornell just can't even get out from their own goal line without three guys on them. In front and Franklin just, mi just missed on that one. He had the entire side of the net to shoot at here, but NU will gain possession again. Yeah, Damon Thierra with the one-man forecheck down low, created the loose puck, got it himself, then made a really nice pass out in front. Maybe just uh, a, a little bit too much on it for the shot to come in on goal. But again, Niagara setting up in the offensive zone and creating nice opportunities with that play below the goal line. Thierra looking for Euler. Puck is too far for him, but Euler flying down the wing, gets there first, absorbs some contact by Harry Akins, and Cornell's looking to break it out here. Akins sends the puck up to Cornell, and again, a nice hit there by Stumpo. He's not the biggest guy on the rink, but don't tell him that. He is not afraid to throw his shoulder into anybody, and there he is again. Cornell will pick up the puck here, and it will be Franklin Berry. Berry will send the puck up, and it's just a hair too far for Alvarez, and the puck is sent all the way down. This will be icing, and we will get a face-off in the Cornell end. Really can't say enough about Niagara's play in the neutral zone tonight. 
They have had uh, plenty of situations like one of those recent rushes up the ice where they connect on the first pass, does Cornell, but it's two Niagara players on either side of the player accepting the pass, and he has to be that much quicker to get something off of his stick. That has created a lot of the turnovers. Even when Cornell has had success in completing the first pass, there isn't enough time and space to do anything with it there in the neutral zone in order to get anything established and to connect on multiple passes. Yes, as you say, as you said, Aaron, Cornell is a structure team and they're very good at their structure, but Niagara is also a structure team, and right now their system is working better for them. Cornell needs to figure something out here, but they are just having trouble even getting out of their own end right now. And I'm not even, I don't know if it's, if they're not playing well, if NU is playing well. Thomason off the turnover, and that was going to test small, but he, Thomason just missed. Cole sends the puck back to Pristall. Pristall, point shot, that's blocked by Dennis Brown, but it goes to Abbott. Abbott looking to send it down to Thomason, and it's going to be held there by, no, it's not. It gets below his glove, and here comes Aiden Cobb. If Cornell can move, they're going to get numbers, but Thomason gets back on the back check. Dennis Brown, again, just not given an inch by those NU defense, and they are getting right in, right in the face of these Cornell forwards. Long shot from the point, hits a man in front, and NU will gather, and they will look to gain some speed. Thomason will send it for Riddle, but it's picked up there, and then Cornell will look for transition. Talk about the Niagara defenders being aggressive, and they're allowed to be aggressive because of the way the forwards are coming back. You saw Thomason get a whole head of steam coming back into his own defensive zone. It made a three on two into a three on three, and that allowed the two defensemen to come up and uh, cut off that lane with the, with the puck carrier into the zone. The defensive support allows the defensemen to be, to be that much more aggressive. Yes, and a lot of coaches will say they preach team defense. Well, Sean Casilio can say his guys buy into it because, wait, turnover down low. We'll get back to that in a second. Looking to send it in front. Where is the puck? And it is found there by Josh LaSalle. Still the numbers advantage for Niagara. They turned the puck over. They made a mistake in their four, own zone. Two on four. But yeah, they had all the players staying in the right area. Nobody was cheating up ice. They still had three guys down in the house there. And the, uh, the two Cornell players really didn't have the room to get that pass out in front. Pretty easy cover eventually for LaSalle. Yes, and I did get a chance to talk to Coach Sean Casillo earlier today, and that is what he said. His standard is set from watching the D1 and the ACHA teams build from their team defense, everybody working as a unit. Sean Casillo and his team have put their money where their mouth is today, and they have backed up all the talk. And Chad Moore, again, how many times has Niagara beaten, beaten an icing out today? It's that's at of, least the fifth time. Yeah, that's part of what the strategy is. They don't mind that long pass through the neutral zone. Even if it doesn't connect, if they have the player with enough speed going up ice, they can beat out the icing call as they have here uh, four or five times, it seems. Yes, Niagara, I mean, both teams said both teams are coming in as determined groups, but Niagara's playing desperate right now. That's S the thing. Scrambling puck, they're almost an opportunity for Cornell, but again, it just doesn't sit in the right spot for them to really Can't get, get a, a shot right. away. The, the puck has been bouncing for Niagara. When that happens, when your team is playing well and playing hard, you're almost unbeatable, and that's what's happening right now. Cornell's going to get a face off, but I want to just get back to this right now. I don't want to say Niagara's getting just puck lock. They're getting a lot of the bounces, but they're also creating the bounces as well. So NU's brought it today. Yeah, the old saying is you create your own luck. It's certainly been the case here for Niagara. Batman line. The, uh, the fact that you're in the right place and doing the right things, puck will usually bounce your way because of that and not necessarily a case where you're hoping for the right puck bounces. They come your way when you're doing things properly over and over again. Absolutely, and Niagara, they have been creating everything, whether it's luck or great plays. They brought it today. Cornell still has time, but you really don't want to mess around with it. Franklin Berry sends the pass D to D where it's picked up there by Aiden Cobb. Cobb will send the puck in down low where it's picked up there by Brady Kanoff. Brady Kanoff will send it to Barry, and then it's going to be tipped in down low. But again, Niagara has two D-men back below the line, and they will get it out, and they'll send it up where Franklin Barry will flag it down. Sent through the neutral zone where it's picked up there by Chad Moore. Chad Moore will send it back there, but it's picked up here by Dennis Brown. Brown looking for the pass. Got it to Cobb, but again, there were three Purple Eagles converging in the slot before Cobb could even get the puck to his stick. And you again, pressure causing a turnover, a long shot steered to the side by Matthew Small. Padmanabhan sends the puck up to Max Miller. Here comes Miller, he's got Alex Allen with him. But again, the back checking forward slows him down. Allen, Allen looking for the shot. And here again, that back check by Niagara just wreaking havoc on any chance at transition there for Cornell. 
Ooh, I thought, I don't, I don't know if Dysert knew how much time he had, but he pulled the puck out of the zone when it was called onside. I think Dysert believed that came out of the zone and he had to tag back up again. Puck sent in deep there by Cornell, and it's going to be held in there by Dysert. Dysert will send it down low where it's held, picked up, and it's going to be held by Bradley Wang with one uh -oh. second left, and they... That was almost the bounce Cornell needed. They've been kind of looking for that bounce that they, that will get them back into this game and get the uh, just enough of momentum for them, but they haven't quite seen it bounce the right way in front of the net here tonight. Another example of it right there is scrambly play, but it was uh, the Niagara players getting the benefit of the way that that puck bounced. And the uh, period comes to a close. It's a 3 nothing Niagara lead. They had a 1 nothing lead after one period of play, Sean, and uh, a dominating performance there in that second period, allowing them to stretch it to a 3 nothing lead. Yeah, Niagara, they did a great job killing off the penalty almost immediately to start the period. And then they get two pretty goals there by Matthew Riddle to go up 3 nothing, force the goaltending change. So Cornell, they're going to continue on. They're going to have any, they're going to have any hopes at the championship tomorrow. They got to get it done in this third period. So it'll be interesting to see if they can mount the comeback. Before we step away, we just want to acknowledge our sponsors as support for our broadcast is brought to you by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility. Simulators, lessons, leagues, Buffalo Golf and Social is the area's best destination for year round practice and instruction. Also, great selection of beer and wine, so it's also the perfect place to sit and watch golf with others who love the game. Locations in downtown Buffalo and in Orchard Park, New York. Book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. This broadcast is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any retail, office, or industrial or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty. Call them at 716-856-2872 or at Militello.com. By West Her, the largest automotive dealer group in the state of New York, selling over 50,000 pre-owned and new vehicles each year to customers in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. West Her Auto, dedicated to absolute excellence in customer service. By Envious Gameware, designers of high-end custom hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel. The thinking of look good, feel good, play good goes into every Envious jersey design. Find them at enviousgameware.com to get your team a look to be envious of. And finally, by 412 Communications, the new gold standard in digital media solutions, offering consultations for web and graphic design, social media, writing and editing services, multimedia, and so much more. Visit them at 412communications.com to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. We have two periods in the books here on Nickel City Hockey Network with the Niagara University Purple Eagles with a 3-0 lead. We'll take a step away and be right back with you for the third period on Nickel City Hockey Network.
Welcome back to Northwest Arena in Jamestown, New York, where we're just about ready for third period action between the Cornell Big Red and the Niagara University Purple Eagles, with Niagara leading by a score of three to nothing, with two goals by Matthew Riddle in the second period. Before we get to third period action, we'd just like to acknowledge that our coverage is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility with simulators, lessons, leagues, Buffalo Golf and Social, the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction and a great selection of beer and wine, making it the perfect place to sit with others and watch, watch golf with others who love the game. Locations downtown and in Orchard Park. Book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. This broadcast on Nickel City Hockey Network is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial and real estate broker to buy, sell, or lease any offer space any office, industrial, retail, or investment property. Trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty at 716-856-2872 or by Militello.com. Just about ready for third period action here at, at um, Northwestern in Jamestown. My name is Sean McHugh on the call with color commentator, producer Aaron Alpern, camera operator Jeff Jezerowski as we are underway in the third period. Puck held in down low there by Dennis Brown. He will come out of there with the puck, looking for assistance, will turn towards the net, sends one right in front, tipped just high by Dysert, and the puck will be picked up by Riddle. Long, pa long pass sent up there by Briggs, sends the puck in deeper. He takes a hit by Podmanabin, and the goaltender, the second goaltender for tonight for Cornell, the Williamsville native Matthew Small, will cover up for a faceoff. Matt Riddle for Niagara, picking up where he left off in the second period. He scored twice in the middle stanza, Already getting that speed going here in the third period. This uh, first five minutes is going to be huge for Cornell, Sean. Yes, they need to get one quick, and they need to get it. Yeah, they need to get one quick no matter how you get them. Starts with possession as Cornell will send the puck high. It will not touch the ceiling, and that's going to work here as Dysart's going to gain the line. But again, something we've touched on all game, this team defense from both the forwards and the D-men of NU making no patch of ice easy to come around for Cornell. And this this will be called offsides, and the faceoff will come out to the neutral zone. Both teams making a couple of changes here, not even 40 seconds into period number three. In that second period, it was the speed and forecheck of Niagara really creating the advantage for the Purple Eagles here in this game. It was a little bit more of a 50-50 first period. Obviously, the Niagara power plays helped them out, but uh, certainly in that second period, separation from the Purple Eagles. And again, this is what this is not what Cornell needs right now. They're trying to stretch the play to, to you know, push speed and create scoring chances, but they do not connect right there. And we are going to get an icing and another defensive zone faceoff for Cornell. If you are Niagara, you will take this all day. Just keep the puck as far away from your net as you can. The relentless forecheck and back check they have been presenting all game will make every inch of ice that much more difficult for Cornell to get. And NU wins the faceoff again as Marcus Bratton will head, send, down, send it down on the wall, and now he will pick up the puck down low. Bratton takes the puck off of Cook, off of Cole, and he will then turn down below the goal line, and he will look to set up offense, skating all the way to the point, and then reversing puck down low where Marcus Bratton will pick it up. A lot of this low-high game out of Niagara here tonight, establishing that cycle below the goal line, moving it out into a more dangerous area. If nothing's there, just patiently send it right back down below the goal line. All you're going to do in that process is just wear out the Cornell defenders. Franklin Berry with a long shot deflected in front by Alex Allen, and they score! Like we said, Aaron, that is the bounce we needed. Franklin Berry keeps the puck in at the blue line, takes a wrist shot, traffic in front, Alex Allen gets something on it, whether it's his body or the stick, it does not matter. It finds the back of the net. One minute and a half into the third period, Cornell gets on the board and they desperately needed that. Wasn't a pretty goal, but it doesn't really matter how pretty it is. All that it matters is that it gets to the back of the net. The establishment of presence in front of the net by Allen, just enough that it, it, for his team, and they got the bounce that they were looking for. This time it's off Allen, past LaSalle into the back of the net. Might take a couple more of those funny bounces to get them back to even, but they at least have that first goal, the first one of the period, and they needed that early on too. Yeah, can't get two until you get one, and there's one, so now you can focus on the other one. And let's see how NU responds to the first touch of adversity they'll see today. Case Cook, who we've seen a lot of this game, sends a pass to the neutral, and that's a bit ill-advised, and here comes Franklin Barry again. Barry rings it off the crossbar, he had him beat, and he just can't beat the elbow of the post. 
Stumpo will send the puck up to Ethan Knopf. He will reverse ice, but again, this is kept in by Kratzios. He's in. Kratzios in. Big save there by Josh LaSalle. Rebound, and he gloves it again. Cornell gets the opportunity they needed desperately, and Niagara gets the goaltending. You need to keep the lead, and here we go, Aaron. We We're might have a penalty here. coming up here against, against Cornell yep. as there was a little bit of an exchange at the net front, and uh, Kratzios kind of got the hands up towards the face of the Niagara player. Terrible penalty to yeah, take. Yeah, uh, that was exactly the wrong time for a penalty for Cornell. So. They had started to chip away and gain some momentum here in this game. The first bit of a pulse that they've seen in well over 20 minutes of game time. Now they have to kill a penalty. Yeah, that's not a great penalty by one of the leaders, but Cornell will go to the kill here as NU get a, gets a chance to get their momentum back. Padmanabhan will look to send it down. It is blocked off there by Jacob Pristall, but he will go back the other way. Pristall sends the puck up and it's gonna be sent in there by Niagara, by Niagara with Briggs, but not for long as Dicer makes a nice play and he gets it to Joey Padmanabhan. Padmanabhan over the line, sends one to the front of the net. Good defensive play by Case to get a stick on Dennis Brown before he could touch the puck and direct it towards the net. Briggs, nice move to get around the D-man and a nice save there by Matthew Small with the shoulder. Best save of the night for either of the two Cornell netminders right there. 100%, here comes Case Cook. Gets by the sprawling defenseman. Cook looking to send it in front. Picked up there by Euler behind the net. Really, really good backhand there. And that sent the length of the ice by Bradley Wang. You're gonna try to catch him in the change though. And they got him changing, but they got out in time where they couldn't go gain the line. And then Euler will reverse ice and he will send the puck down low where it's picked up by Franklin Berry. Franklin Berry sends the puck off the wall. It's tipped out to the neutral zone where it's gonna be picked up once again by Pristall. Pristall gains the line, hits a stick, hits the glass and flies out of play. We're gonna get a whistle and we're going to get a face off. At least for the first uh, minute and nine seconds of this penalty, this has gotta be exactly what Luke Kratzios wants to see from his teammates. Took a penalty that uh, I'm sure his coaches didn't like in the offensive zone. At least so far, his teammates have picked him up and done the work on the penalty kill. Still 51 seconds remaining in this Niagara power play. Scanlon wins the face off back to Pristall. He will send the puck over to Ethan Knopf. Ethan Knopf looks for Euler. Good poke there by Matthew Small. Chad Moore will send the puck down low where it's picked up there by Scanlon. Scanlon will get the puck there to Damon Fiera. Damon Fiera hits the brakes and reverses ice heads down the goal line and then goes to the front of the net. Ethan Knopf behind the net and he will reverse ice, trying to get rid of Harry Akins, and a good defensive play by Akins. But again, the on-puck support there by Damon Fiera keeps possession for Niagara. Damon Fiera behind the net, looking in front of Pristall. Pristall, good job controlling the puck, directs it down towards the goal line, and then Scanlon and Pristall are battling down there with Harry Akins and Aiden Cobb. Excellent play there by Pristall on the power play using his body to protect the puck. He had one of the more dangerous Cornell players on him, almost had himself a rush up ice, but it was Pristol's body position that made sure that Niagara kept possession. Bad angle shot there by Knopf, rebound, he scored! Brady Knopf just lulls the Cornell defense to sleep, fires a low shot from the goal line. Small makes the initial save, but it's not clean. Goes right back to Ethan Knopf, bangs home the rebound, and when you make a mistake against this team, they make you pay for it as Niagara gets the goal right back and they get their four to one lead and the three goal lead is theirs again. Just seconds after the power play had ended as it was Kratzios coming into the zone after his penalty had expired. He was just barely steps away from getting into the right place in order to tie somebody up in front. But it was that enough time there with the uh, personnel advantage in front of the net that allowed Knopf to get that second chance opportunity. He put it home and it's now a three, three goal game yet again. PJ Abbott will send the puck in down low and it will be picked up there by Matthew Riddle. Riddle sends the puck in down low where it's gonna be picked up there by Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown in behind his own net looking to set things up. He will send the puck over to Joey Padmanabhan. Padmanabhan will go up the ice and then through the neutral zone, he gets taken down. No, nope. yep, the far ref got it and it will be either a slash or a trip, and Cornell will head back to the power play as Matthew Riddle maybe got a little too active with the stick on Padmanabhan, brings him down, and Cornell will go back to the power play. Riddle just all over the score sheet tonight. Two goals in the second period. Now he has a penalty to add to it here in the third period. Uh, his team has plenty of momentum, though. This is uh, a team that uh, got did exactly what they needed to with their power play. They didn't score on the power play, but they had it in the offensive zone for plenty of time. 
wore down the penalty killers and uh, just about five seconds after the penalty finally expired, they were able to get their goal, creating the three goal lead yet again. Now Cornell's gonna get another opportunity on the power play and uh, just as important as the last one was, this is a huge, huge power play for Cornell. And Dicer will start down low and he will send the puck up to Padmanabhan. Padmanabhan sends it off the boards where Dicer will pick it up there. Little miscommunication, Padmanabhan is going to the net. Dicer sent it to his open point and Cornell will look to regain possession and they will reset. Padmanabhan behind the net, he'll drop it for Dicer. Dicer fakes the drop pass, doesn't fool anybody and then will just send it up to Max Miller. Miller will send it in deep, but it's right on the goaltender LaSalle, and he will drop it to Stumpo, who will ring it around the boards, and the puck will head out all the way down the ice, and we'll kill more time here. Briggs, in hot pursuit of the captain, Joey Podmanabin, he will send the puck up to Max Miller. Max Miller will send the puck up just behind Dennis Brown, and Stumpo will pick it up, and down the ice we go, as this power play has really been a struggle for Cornell. Yeah, penalty killing display here so far. A, uh, a clinic here from the Purple Eagles so far. This power play, much like a couple of the ones that we've seen already here tonight for Cornell, kind of stuck in neutral. And uh, and it's because of what Niagara is doing, making things that much more difficulty, just difficult, just enough pressure in the offensive zone and then filling those passing lanes in the neutral zone. Alex Allen looks to send the puck in front of the net. That play is read beautifully by Logan Scanlon. He will send the puck all the way down the ice where Matthew Small will pick it up. And again, nowhere to go with the puck as Ethan Knopf is all over the outlet pass. And NU is just gonna bury, the, is just gonna pinch the puck up against the wall and they're just gonna bleed seconds. Th two forwards down below the wall, both defensemen in position right now. They, this is just a clinic penalty killing right now, Aaron. Yeah, just 22 seconds remaining here in this Cornell power play, and uh, by the time this one expires, I would guess that it's going to be Niagara as the team that has more of the momentum coming out of it. They've had just as much time in the offensive zone as Cornell has during this two-minute power play. Padmanabhan gets the puck in front of the net, but again, Niagara collapses and moves the puck out of harm's way, and they will reset. Alex Allen picks up the puck, shrugs off Ethan Knopf. He will send the puck to Padmanabhan with a bad angle shot, and somehow LaSalle sees that into his glove. He will hold on for the faceoff right as the Purple Eagles return to full strength. A great job killing the penalty by Niagara as we approach the halfway point of the first period. Yeah, there was uh, one opportunity late on the power play for Cornell. In this case, it seemed that it was uh, just a half a second off from being able to be converted, and that seems to be the theme of the night so far for Cornell, is that Niagara at least has made it that much more difficult by not giving that half a second of time. And Cornell hasn't been able to create that extra time that they need. So far, Niagara is, uh, as, is, as we keep on talking about, the team defense is really enough to suffocate this Cornell attack. The team defense for Niagara, the thing is they're playing defense in the offensive zone as well. Not a single Cornell Big Red player can touch the puck at all without at least one, oftentimes two, of the Niagara Purple Eagles right on them. That is the same in the defensive zone as well. Down low, on the wall, in the slot, all the high danger areas. You gotta pay a price to get there and just Cornell just has just had nothing but difficulty getting there for most of the night. That's a high stick. Oh, they're calling that a high stick and that'll be an offensive zone face off for Cornell. At least that's what I think they're calling. Yes, that is the call. Yeah, Cook pleading his case there that he gloved it down to himself, the uh, referee arguing that case. I'm not sure who he's saying played it with a high stick. I don't know whether or not Cook is gonna listen to this explanation. So uh, I'm not sure that, that any sort of thing was communicated there that's allowed Cook to understand what happened. Either way you look at it though, it's a defensive zone draw for the Purple Eagles. Well, I hope he doesn't ask us what the call is because I don't, I don't understand it either. I didn't see a high stick there, but be that as it may, uh, the call is made and we're gonna get an icing and we're gonna get another offensive zone face off for the Cornell Big Red. So this is, I mean, you don't quit here and you never say never, but Cornell's got to be thinking, you got to get one before the 10-minute mark, I mean, at the very least. Yeah, and they had to think that they had what they wanted early on in this period. They wanted to get that early goal. They did. They got the proper bounce. They were back within two goals, but uh, the penalty ends up being what kills that momentum. It was just after the penalty expired that uh, Niagara got their fourth goal and their three-goal lead back. This shift, next two shifts or so for Cornell, they're probably going to need to develop something. Well, they're going to get an opportunity because Niagara has begun icing the puck a little bit, whether that's by design or the stretch pass or whatever it may be. It gives Cornell an opportunity to at least gain a little bit of offensive zone time, but they got to win these face-offs too. You can't get possession if you don't win the face-off. 
Yeah, and quick, uh, the quick succession of icing plays for uh, Niagara really isn't going to hurt them much. Actually, we're going to get a timeout taken here. I'm guessing this is Niagara, but it could be Cornell. This one could be either way. Let's see if we can get a signal here. Niagara may be trying to get their guys some extra rest, and uh, Cornell maybe. Yeah, it was Niagara taking the timeout, as you hear, over the uh, public address right now, as we have 12-18 remaining in the third period. Niagara looking to get that uh, extra little bit of rest here before this uh, third consecutive defensive zone draw. And while we have a minute, we would like to acknowledge that support for this Nickel City Hockey broadcast is brought to you by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's premier leading indoor golf facility with simulators, lessons, leagues, Buffalo Golf and Social, the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction with a great selection of beer and wine, making it the perfect place to sit and watch golf with others who love the game. Locations downtown and in Orchard Park. Book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. And, by, and this broadcast is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier real estate broker to buy, sell, or lease any office real estate Invest in property, trust the unparalleled knowledge of Militello Realty, visit them at Militello.com. Oh, and we almost missed one, but we're good. Matt Riddle's speed again, creating a loose puck and just creating uh, all sorts of havoc there. There were two Cornell players that had plenty of room to go to and get that puck. Riddle got the uh, engine going, though, and uh, cut that gap down pretty quickly. Almost had himself another scoring opportunity as he's looking for his third. Yeah, Riddle's been all over the ice today, and yeah, Niagara, there are one thing Cornell has been doing. They've had a bit of a hard time maybe hitting that breakout pass that they've been successful with. Having said that, though, I have a feeling Niagara is a lot more concerned about playing responsibly on their own end right now than they are about trying to hit breakaway passes that might be forced. Clock is going to be the enemy of Cornell starting pretty soon. 11.50 remaining. They're going to have to get going, and there's an opportunity right off the draw as Cobb created something himself by pushing that faceoff forward. Good shot on goal. It looked like LaSalle wasn't sure if he made that save or not. There's the long pass again. Can Briggs beat that out? He will not. He did, actually. Oh, he, he, did. Got, he got the call. It, I'm not sure the puck actually got there up against the near boards. Well, that works well for Niagara. They're going to look to set up in the offensive zone, but Franklin Berry, who's had a great game himself, will set up, and he's looking to call out the breakout play. Look at this, Aaron. Five Purple Eagles in the neutral zone right now. Yeah, they have uh, gone back into a bit of a defensive shell, and, and they have every why. right to do so and every ability to do so here. That's they the have goal. the three-goal lead, and if you're going to try to go a long pass through the neutral zone, it's going to be hard to connect on, and you're probably going to end up with more icing calls than you do actual opportunities in the offensive zone with those numbers and speed that you're trying to set up. Yeah, Cornell's got to get away from that, or they got to make sure they can hit it right there because that's Niagara literally is saying, we'll give you anything on the ice but that. It's like the old adage, you know, you take a big arm quarterback and you just force him to only to throw, take anything but the deep ball. You know, we, we know a quarterback in our neck of the woods that might have, that, you know, people say that about. So same principle here. I don't agree with those people, but that's what people say. A little bit more discipline there in terms of how they move that puck up ice. The uh, defenseman skating it up ice there for Cornell on that, on that exchange. They end up getting it into the offensive zone, not able really to set up anything in the uh, around the around the cage there for uh, for the scoring opportunity, but uh, might be the type of uh, type of work that that they need to continue here if they're going to get back into this game as we're approaching uh, ten, the 10-minute 10 mark of the third period. The uh, trips up ice need to have a little bit more time in the offensive zone here for Cornell. It's been a lot of one and done. P.J. Abbott with the puck on the boards. He's going to kind of flip that over with his hand. But uh, we're players struggling to get back to the bench here for yeah, Niagara. That's, Euler that's was hurt. Euler. There was a numbers advantage for Cornell in the offensive zone. I'm not sure they knew about it. Certainly didn't uh, didn't end up with a scoring chance because of it. Euler finally getting to the bench. Cornell will look to continue possession as they will send the puck in deep here, where it's going to be picked up there by Jacob Pristall. Pristall will send it up. That's going to get on net though. That's Small's going to have to hold that. So that's going to work out beautifully for NU. Yeah, even if that didn't get on net and uh, ended up wide of the cage, the uh, Niagara forward Thierra had all the speed into the offensive zone. So Small had to be uh, quick to play that one and to make sure that there was no opportunity for the Niagara forward. But again, more of what Niagara has to want to see here playing the kind of defensive structure that allows them to not allow Cornell much time in the offensive zone. If you only allow the other team five to eight seconds in the offensive zone, it's tough to use that time to develop any sort of decent chance. Chad Moore, quick shot off the faceoff block, and then Abbott picks it right up off the hop, fires one towards the side of the net, just misses there. Two NU Purple Eagles down below on the forecheck, making life miserable for Dennis Brown. He will send the puck over to Murphy Klein. 
Murphy Klein will get the puck and he will send it up and that putt just picked off by Chad Moore. Nice play there by Knopf. Moore gets in behind him. Pad save by Small and then he slides over Ooh. and makes another nice save on Logan Scanlon. Nice play there by the Purple Eagles. Chad Moore gets a really, does what the coaches always say from the angle shoot low for the rebound. There was the rebound but Matthew Small pushes off on that right leg, gets into position, makes a great save and it remains four to one. Yeah, Small has been sharp since coming into this game in relief in the second period. He had a couple of tests right away after he came into the game. He's only given up the one goal so far here in third period play. Really sharp save right there to keep this one a three-goal game. Puck picked up there by Niagara. Here's Matthew Riddle. He get yeah, they're going to call that boarding all day. A little bit of a response coming Great. from Briggs as well. Uh, his teammate's going to try to get him out of there to make sure that he doesn't take a penalty. Yeah, and Matthew Riddle pulls Briggs, the captain, off of him. Briggs doing his job as the captain of the team to stand up for his teammates. But Riddle, knowing that he got the call smartly, breaks it up, lets the officials do the rest, and Niagara will go to the power play with not to get ahead of anything, but I feel like the dagger's in there. They have a chance to twist it now. Yeah, certainly a uh, big chance here for Niagara to put this one away. A three-goal lead is already pretty considerable here with under 10 minutes to go. If they're able to add that extra one here on the power play, that should allow them to go back into even more of that defensive shell that we've seen here in the last couple of minutes and make it uh, that much taller of a hill to climb here for Cornell. This is uh, exactly where the number two team in the country wants to be at this point in the game, and they have a chance to really put it away right now. Yep, and Cornell, they are aggressive on the penalty kill. They did start the game creating scoring chances that way, and they're doing this again. Kratzios hard on the four check, but LaSalle sends it around the boards. Oh, and Kratzios buries, buries Case Cook. No call there. Uh, Cook picks up the stick. He's no worse for wear, and we'll continue on. Yeah, I think this uh, Cornell penalty kill, that's the, that's the strategy is to be right in on top of the puck carriers try to create loose pucks like they did right there at the blue line, but Thomason got it into the zone still. Good play there by Cornell, and the puck is sent all the way down the ice. That was Aiden Cobb with the great defensive play to send it through, and Jacob Prishko will pick up the puck behind the net, and he is going to be perfectly content to just sit there and wait for exactly what he wants. That wasn't it, though. Prisco will pick up the puck, and he will shield off Aiden Cobb and get rid of him with no problem, and he's going to skate it out himself. Prisco, pretty D to D pass to you, cross ice pass to Euler. Euler will reverse course. He'll send a pretty cross ice pass to Knopf. Looking for the backdoor tap in. The rebound is tapped in again. It's Logan Scanlon. Johnny on the spot on the doorstep. Pretty passing through the neutral zone. A shot, a rebound. Number 13 in white. Logan Scanlon right on the doorstep. Bangs home the rebound. And like we mentioned, Aaron, there's the dagger. It's twisted. Niagara has a 4-1 lead. We are entering miracle territory now if Cornell is going to come back here. Yeah, that was the first time it seemed like Niagara was able to establish their look on the power play. They like to get that spread out across the offensive zone and then move it from side to side. In that case, they had it spread out, and they managed to move the puck east to west, getting, getting the defense going back and forth, and the uh, couple of chances at the doorstep. Scanlon is a guy that if you give enough chances there at, at close range with a goaltender down, he's going to put one of those home. No surprise that he did in that case. And it's the uh, fifth goal for the Purple Eagles, and they have just about pu punched their ticket into the finals tomorrow. And they're not going to stop either because one thing we know about this NU team, especially knowing who their coach is, they're going to continue to play. They're going to play clean. They're going to play the right way, but they're going to play hard. They believe that if you go easy on your opponent, you're disrespecting them, and that is not something that Sean, a Sean Casilio coach team is going to do. They're going to continue to play hard, knowing that they are playing a team that's potent. So I don't expect anything to stop. I do expect Cornell, though, to keep playing as well because they should be proud of what they've done this year. Oh, boy, Franklin Berry gets away with a, with a massive slash there. Shot wide of the net, and Harry Akins will pick it up on the wall, but he overskates it, and Chad Moore in on the forecheck. We'll keep it in before it's chipped out of, the, out of there and held and held. Dicer looking to kick it ahead there. Murphy Klein sends it to an open wing, and it's going to be it's going to be picked up there by Niagara University. This is going to be Matthew Kroll. Matthew Kroll on the half wall with a D-man in his pocket. He sends it down low, a little far ahead of Thomason, but Marcus Bratton coming in in support. We'll keep the puck on the wall before Cornell is able to break it out. 
puck sent through just a hair too far for Julian Bement, and it's chipped out where it's going to be picked up there by Murphy Klein. Klein will send a puck. His man was changing, and Brady Kanoff picks up the puck in the neutral zone, and he fires the puck all the way back down where it's going to be picked up by Cornell. And Thomason in on the forecheck. Man down, that's Bement and Niagara just continuing. They will take this. Oh, man, this is it's just going from bad to worse for Cornell right now. Niagara will take this all day, just continue to get the puck and fire it back into the new, into the offensive zone if they have nothing there. Purple Eagles have all the life in this game. They look like the team with uh, plenty in the energy tanks right now. Cornell looks like they're getting gassed at this point. That's not what they need in terms of trying to come back in a game where they're down by four. They've uh, been on their heels having to play defense a lot. That low-high game that Niagara's been trying to do in the offensive zone, the defenders maybe are worn down now from Cornell. It's uh, that much more difficult because of the way Niagara's been playing. Puck picked up there by Case Cook. He, I, I am exhausted watching him because he has played pretty much the entire game going 1,000 miles an hour. Alex Allen, good play there, picks it up. He's got a forward on him, drops it back there to Aiden Cobb. One too many moves, just got to get the puck to the net, and Niagara again going to look to transition here. Quick stick from Joseph Stumpo there in the defensive zone with the poke awesome. check. He has had... Uh, Maybe his best game of the year. I haven't seen every single Niagara game, but in ter terms of the ones that I've seen, this is one where he's absolutely been a standout. Aiden Cobb sends it to Allen. Puck is in his feet, and Niagara's going to look to counter. Franklin sends the puck up. The puck is sent in there by Nicholas Mangia. And then it bounces in, and it's held there by Cornell. That two-on-one opportunity, that's uh, kind of been a symptom of what we've seen all night from Cornell. They have the opportunities, but it's just a fraction off that pass. Not just not that far off the mark, just enough in the skates that it was difficult to handle. And another chance goes by the wayside. Niagara hasn't given a lot of opportunities here in this game, but uh, the the game of inches that hockey can be hasn't quite gone in the way of Cornell in this game. And that's what uh, has been a big part of this story so far. Riddle get, gaining the puck possession there, but Barry gets it from him. And the puck is sent through. Cornell looking to break out here. This is Dysert. Dysert turning in the neutral zone. And right there, three Purple Eagles just converge on him. And they send the puck in deep. Yeah, Niagara again. They're just setting up the five. They're just setting up all five guys in the neutral zone. And they're going to force the play to them. Yes, essentially a 2-3 look with only the, uh, the forwards about a step inside the blue line. They still managed to force a turnover out of it. Almost a great scoring chance for Briggs. Great look there by Niagara and Cornell looking to counter. Here they come. Here comes Dicer. Dicer through the neutral zone, over the line, and Prisco with a great defensive play. Hand on chest, clean as a whistle, and Niagara looks to break out. Here's Riddle. Riddle dips by one. Here's the Riddle, two on one. We both, I'm not going to say it, Aaron, but I think we both know what he was thinking there. Something to do with some headwear. Yes, I do need a pair of Oakley sunglasses. Not what I was thinking. That's eyewear. Headwear is more of a, a top of headpiece. I see. Okay, so he needs a, what, what do they call those in Canada? A toque? Toque? Yeah, he needs one of those. It is cold out. I'm not going to say it. I won't do it. I don't think you can jinx one of those. It's only the shutouts that you can jinx. You can't jinx a hat trick. And I, I said I, it. I, I did do that. I, I might have done that our last broadcast. No, I did it. I actually said the word, though. <laughs> You said zero, I said shutout, and then four seconds later got scored on. Announcers jinx don't don't exist unless they do. Well, Jim Nance, well, Jim Nance does it all the time. Only well, calls a lot of games. It's bound to happen. Fine. Here comes Cornell through the neutral zone again. Brady Kanoff is having absolutely none of that tonight. I really don't know why Cornell continues to try him like that. It's not working. He has been all of the Niagara defensemen are perfect. Yeah, Chad Moore sends one to Ethan Kanoff. Sorry for that, whatever that was that came out of me there. Well, this is part of, you, you see the defenseman making plays like that. It's a couple, two or three times that Brady Kanoff has ended up with a one-on-one -on -one situation, but it's a one-on-one -on -one with the puck carrier only because there are enough defenders back for Niagara. There's always a forward back, if not two, anytime Cornell gets it into the offensive zone. That allows the defenseman to be aggressive, to step up and take the puck carrier one-on-one, -on -one, knowing the defensive support is there. And it's been there, and it's been beautiful. I mean, I, I do not. I, I am not trying to say anything about Cornell. Like, it's just if you want to watch this, if you want to watch a game tape that shows just how to play great team defense in the offensive, defensive, and neutral zones, watch this tape the way the Niagara Purple Eagles have done it. I mean, they have five goals, but they're also playing 
like a Lou Lamorello style defense, but they found a way to make it not boring, and that's just something I didn't think was possible. Well, they're generating plenty of offense from it because they're in all the right passing lanes in the neutral zone. There's nothing there, but that's that did not look good. Ooh, player down for Cornell here in the uh, Niagara he zone. He fell. The Niagara person tried to avoid him. Ah, that's where he got hit. Okay. The general midsection, uh, a lower. mid body. Let's call it just call it mid body as you see. Uh, the Cornell player trying to get back to his skates. Clearly in a lot of discomfort. Uh, can't quite tell the number on the player there. I didn't really see what happened, Sean. Uh, it looked like they saw each other coming. They both tried to avoid each other, but it was one of those things, and we've all been there. It's just it's too, like, it's too late to avoid it. You try to bail out to do as much damage control as you can. Kratzios is up on his knee, so it looks like he just got the wind knocked out of him. So hopefully... I mean, that stinks, but hopefully that's all it is and he's going to be okay because one thing you don't want to see ever, 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 but much less in, late in the game that's, I'm sorry, Cornell fans, but appears to be decided. You don't want to see injuries. I mean, that's one thing that we can all agree upon, whether no matter rivalry or not, no, we don't want to see people get injured. Uh, but it looks like Kratzios is on his feet. He's going to skate it off. Nobody's any worse for wear, thank goodness, and uh, we should be all right there. Yeah, Kratzios is a player that uh, Cornell's certainly going to be looking to in a couple weeks' time as the Big Red make their first appearance at the AAU College Hockey National Championships. Niagara will be there as well, as will one of the teams that we see in our nightcap tonight, that is Binghamton. So uh, plenty of UNYCHL representation coming up at the national tournament coming up in two weeks in Philadelphia. But we still have a league champion to crown, and uh, for yet again another year in the UNYCHL, it will not be a repeat champion as St. Bonaventure was knocked out in the quarterfinals. Niagara hoping to get there to stake their claim to the title as they appear to be ready to punch their ticket into the championship game tomorrow. Just two minutes and 51 seconds remaining between them and that date in the finals tomorrow. And it's been a great showing, Niagara. They are the highest seeded team coming into this tournament and they are flexing those muscles right now hard. They played a complete game. LaSalle has been brilliant. Defensively, it's been a clinic. Offensively, they've got five power play, penalty kill. It's all working for them. Mostly disciplined, but um, but uh, before we get started though, we do want to acknowledge our sponsors. Wester, the largest automotive dealer group in New York State, selling over 5,000 pre-owned and new cars every year to customers in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. Wester Auto, dedicated to absolute excellence in customer service. PJ Abbott looking to send the puck out and we're gonna get another whistle and I'm gonna, we are gonna take that opportunity to acknowledge that Envious Gamewear as a sponsor of this broadcast as well, designers of custom high-end hockey uniforms, bags and apparel, the thought of look good, feel good, play good goes into NV, every Envious jersey design. Find them at enviousgamewear.com to get them a look to be envious of. Dicer leans in for the faceoff against Franklin, who is told to knock it off. And then he win and then Dicer wins the faceoff, sends it back to Podmanabin. Podmanabin, nice little stutter step, but the puck is blocked in front. Picked up there by Dicer Pelos, tries to send one in front, doesn't make it there, and he will continue to work down low. Dicer puts on the brakes, gets by Stumpo. Dicer looking for a bad angle shot. Puck comes out in front, but Niagara will clear it, and then it's going to be picked up by Damon Fiera. Damon Fiera, nice pass, sends up, here comes Mendia, shoots, and a big save there by Matthew Small, his best save of the game. Good play on the breakaway by Nicholas Mendia. And it's defense leading to offense in that case. You saw the Cornell player make a move in the far corner of the offensive zone to get around the defenseman. The support defense was there. It was Franklin getting in the way, falling back to get into the right position. He intercepted the pass. That ended up leading to a break at the other end. Franklin then setting up a teammate for a great scoring opportunity. So we have talked about the Niagara team defense and the way that their structure has been excellent here in this game. And you see a great example of that where the defensive zone proper play leads to a scoring chance at the other end. It's been this way the entire game. It's how they built their structure. It's how they try to play. It's a structure that Sean Casilio has preached from day one. And Niagara is executing that structure to an absolute T so far in this game. Little Matt, little uh, a little chest still being playing here with 145 left, but it looks like the two players are leaning in for the faceoff as Luke Cross will lean in and he will win the faceoff. But Cornell will look to break out, but Wojciechowski sends the puck in deep. 
Dennis Brown will send the puck up there where it's held there by Brady Kanoff. Kanoff will send the puck off the boards and down below the Cornell goal line with a minute and a half remaining in regulation time. Harry Akins tries to send a long pass, drills Wojciechowski in the back, but it counts as a good defensive play. And here comes Niagara again. Here is Riddle. Riddle puts a move on a defenseman Akins, but he recovers nicely and takes the puck back. Puck picked up there, and it's sent all the way back in there by Luke Cross, where it's going to be played there by Matthew Small. What do we got? We have uh, the puck was played with a high stick, so we will get a face off with one minute and six seconds to go in regulation time. Seems that we have a uh, almost a decided result here. Four goals in a minute six is going to be tough to make up for Cornell, and it appears that the Niagara Purple Eagles will get a chance to play in their first UNYCHL title game tomorrow. The second year for this Niagara program, can't really say enough about how fast they've been able to grow into one of the league's absolute powerhouses. And uh, they certainly have backed up their inaugural season with a trip to the national tournament. A lot of success last year with an even better season this year. And uh, tomorrow they're going to get a chance to win the league championship as uh, they have done everything they had to do here in this game. A uh, great performance from start to finish by this Purple Eagles team, the number two team in the country, showing why they have earned that ranking. Yep, and they've done it in all three zones, offensive, de offensive, defensive, and neutral, and they're still playing here. We're down to 30 seconds left as Harry Akins will send the puck up to Franklin Berry, who will send the puck to Max Miller with a shot, and it's saved there by Josh LaSalle, and he will hold it for a faceoff with 22 seconds to play in regulation. One more face-off, one more opportunity for some changes here uh, for both sides. As mentioned, though, Cornell not done this season. This won't be the, uh, the the last game of their year as they have a bid in the national tournament in Philadelphia in two weeks. So not all is lost here, but uh, obviously not the result that they wanted here in this semifinal game against Niagara. Purple Eagles, though, 17 seconds away from their ticket to the finals in, in tomorrow's Tier 1 championship game. Yep, we're down to eight seconds, uh, seven, six, and five. A great season by the Cornell Big Red. They bounced back after, you know, a 500 season where they did not like where they were. Great to see this program that has a rich hockey history at all levels uh, playing in that historic building of theirs. They will be back. They will be a force to be reckoned with. Um, can't say enough of the job Dave Cook has done with these Cornell Big Red. But to the other end of the ice, it was a dominant performance by the Niagara Purple Eagles. Great coaching by Sean Casilio and staff. They got the goaltending, they got the scoring, they had the advantage in special teams, and they played one of the best defensive games we've seen, and they will advance to the UNYCHL Tier 1 Championship tomorrow, and they will see the winner of our next game between the Binghamton Bearcats and the Niagara County Community College Thunderwolves. Quick recap of the scoring in this one. In the first period, it was P.J. Abbott getting the goal. Early on at the 16:27 mark, assists going to Ethan Kanoff and Logan Scanlon. In the second period, it was Matthew Riddle picking up his first of the game with 15:55 to go in the period. Case Cook getting the assist on that one. Riddle would score again before the end of the second period. Jacob Crystal getting the assist on that goal was 6:30 remaining in the period. Cornell finally got on the board in the third as it was Alex Allen scoring a minute 28 into the period. Assists going to Franklin Berry and Matthew Weinstein. But it was the last two goals of the game scored by Niagara. Ethan Knopf unassisted with 15.43 remaining. Then Logan Scanlon getting the goal with 8.26 to go. Ethan Knopf and Kevin Euler with the assist on that goal. And that is our final score. It is 5-1 in favor of Niagara and a pretty command performance in terms of shots on goal. A 40-23 advantage for Niagara and uh, certainly a deserving victor here in this game. We'll have our three star selections coming up here in just a moment. We're going to take a quick break and be back with the selections of the three stars for this win. It is a win for the Niagara University Purple Eagles, and the final score is 5-1 in favor of Niagara. They have themselves a date in the UNY CHL Championship game tomorrow afternoon. People ask, what is Buffalo Golf and Social? Buffalo Golf and Social is anything you want it to be. It can be the best instruction, 
It can be a vibe. It can be a hangout with your friends, running a simulator for four hours, playing your own playlist, and putting a game up on the TV. We are about everything and anything pertaining to golf. And most importantly, we are trying to build a community of players and a community of people who love and are dedicated to the game. And welcome back to the Wester post game post game show here from Jamestown, New York. We are here to pronounce tonight's three stars. Our third star was the goaltender for Niagara, Josh Lassell. Outstanding game, allowing one goal and kept it in and kept the game close. Went kept it one nothing, and then allowed NU to blow it out of the water. Second star, Case Cook. You know, played great defensively his the entire game. Involved in every play, defense, offense, and in the neutral zone. And then tonight's first star is Matt Riddle. It was one nothing when he started creating. He created two goals with great speed, individual efforts, leading to a three nothing lead. Kind of, you know, not putting it out of reach, but a certain command here, forcing Cornell to climb the hill the rest of the period. They were not able to recover. Aaron, those are our three stars of the game tonight. Yeah, certainly deserving efforts uh, for all three players there. 22 of 23 saves for Josh Lasella net, doing what he's done all year for this Niagara team, making every save that you expect him to and a couple that you might not. He, uh, he's been excellent since the beginning of the season. His record certainly backs that up, and he uh, delivered yet another strong performance here tonight. Another strong performance from everybody on the Niagara Blue Line. We uh, pointed out individuals throughout the game. Uh, Stumpo, Abbott had the first goal. Crystal was very good. Uh, Case Cook, though, is the one that we're going to throw in here as the number two star. Kind of an example of the, uh, the Blue Liners from Niagara. He had one assist in this game and uh, part of an all-around defensive unit. Uh, all seven of them were solid here in this game. But, uh, yeah, Matt Riddle, the speed and the uh, the offensive flourish, two great goals there in that second period. That uh, really was where Niagara put their stamp on this game was those two second period markers as well as the way they played through the second period. So, uh, yeah, Matt Riddle with the two goals here tonight. One of the leaders on his team and certainly showed uh, showed that leadership as he helped lead his team to victory with those two goals in period number two. And that's going to do it for us here today. But before we go, we do want to acknowledge those who make our broadcast possible. Our coverage is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility with simulators, lessons, leagues. Buffalo Golf and Social is the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. With a great selection of beer and wine, it's also the perfect location to sit down and watch golf with others who love the game. Locations in downtown Buffalo and Orchard Park, New York book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. This broadcast on Nickel City Hockey Network is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty, or visit them at 716-856-2872 or at militello.com. By Wester, the largest automotive dealer group in, West in New York State selling over 50,000 pre-owned and new automobiles every year to customers in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. West Her Auto dedicated to the absolute excellence in customer service. By Envious Gamewear, designers of custom high-end hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel. The thinking of look good, feel good, play good goes into every Envious jersey design. Find them on enviousgamewear.com to get your team a look to be envious of. By 412 Communications, the new gold standard for digital media solutions, offering consultation for web and graphic design, social media, writing and editing services, multimedia solutions, and so much more. Visit them at 412communications.com to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. Well, we have a little bonus guest here before we sign off on the broadcast as uh, our number one star of the game, Matt Riddle, joins us here in the press box. And, uh, Sean, I'll give you an opportunity to ask him a few questions here about his great performance tonight. I'll hand over the headset to uh, the man of the hour, Matt Riddle, as uh, his team enjoyed the 5-1 victory here in this game over Cornell. And uh, now hand it back over to you, Sean, as we hear from uh, one of the stars of the game here tonight. Matt, thank you so much for joining us today, man. Great game. You guys are coming in as the highest seed in this tournament. 
one thing we pointed out here on post game is it was a tight game until you kind of decided to take matters into your own hand, turn on the Jets and Barry too. First and second goal, when you pick up the puck in the neutral zone, what's going through your head? Are you thinking create play? Or are you saying, the heck with it, I'm just going in myself here? Uh, you know, it was a close game, so, you know, whatever to get the boys fired up. And I was just like, you know what, let's turn on the Jets. Let's use that speed. And it worked out for me. Absolutely. No, I talked to your coach earlier today, and I mentioned that you guys have been near the top of the rankings pretty much all year from the start of the season after an unprecedented, incredibly successful inaugural season. My question to you guys is, how do you continue to focus knowing every game you're going to fake, you're going to play, whether it's end trip, Binghamton, Cornell, or Buffalo State, or whoever, you know you're going to get everybody's best shot. How do you stay up and just stay sharp for that every single game? Uh, you know, it doesn't matter who we play. Our coaches have always been preaching just one period at a time. It doesn't matter who we're going against. Um, you know, they're going to always play us tough. Uh, just one period at a time, three periods in a game, you know, just that's all we focus on, really. And one final question. You guys are in the finals. You're going to get one of these next two opponents, the Thunderwolves or the Bearcats. Are you going to do any scouting tonight? Are you going to hang out and enjoy this one? What are you guys going to do? Uh, I think we're going to stay and watch some of the game. Um, we like to see who we're going to play next. So, and uh, what's the game plan going into tomorrow? Uh, just play a solid three periods. You know, one period at a time, get pucks in deep, and just build the house. Matt Riddle, the first star of the game, two goals on two sweet plays using his speed and skill to be one of the driving forces behind a dominant Niagara University Purple Eagles win. Catch them tomorrow in the Tier 1 Championship. That's going to do it for us here on Nickel City Hockey Network. Join us for our next game as, as the Niagara County Community College Thunderwolves take on the Binghamton Bearcats. That's going to do it for us today. For color, for color commentator and producer Aaron Alpern, camera operator Jeff Jezerowski, I'm Sean McHugh. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you in a little bit on Nickel City Hockey Network.